Welcome to the EST Hangout. This is the EST Hangout, and today's guests are... Happy Thursday morning to you. Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw on this, the first day of March Madness. Matt Awanek with you here, walking Gage with us. Murray McCourt on his way in, but traffic, it is a mess out there. So he he and actually Zach to come are running late. They both texted. Is that bad run. outside? Uh, and Lieutenant really? Eric's just going to join in for now. Yeah, it's just... Is it snowing or... Oh, it's yeah. snowing down pretty good. Oh, okay. And yeah. so it becomes a little icy. And yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like... When you're stopped, and like for at least for my car, when I stop, red light, and then you get going again, it's well, just no, your yeah. wheels start spinning a little bit, so you mm-hmm. need to get that traction it's, going. When we're in here in the morning, we don't know, like, yep. it could be arm, it could be Armageddon. And oh, it's yes. bad. No, but it's, like, we wouldn't know. Yeah. Right? yeah. And it, like, it was, I'm like you, for like half my drive, it was fine on the way in. Like, there was nothing, no real traffic. And then it got to a point where then Everyone's it just was like, bad. Yeah. And it's a short, like, 15-minute drive, but there was that last half. It was just a lot of stopping. There's very slow. Some guy cut me off and almost oh, ran into them. Boy. Wasn't happy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's just a little... It's a little... Murray saying there... Like, I said, no rush. In, no, and no. I meant to Murray, like, like take your time. Don't no. do not do something crazy. Don't rush today. But he's like, yeah, rushing isn't, isn't possible. Moving oh, 100 yards from, in 10 minutes. I wonder which way he came, too. Like, he probably went Hende. He's, he's on in, 170th. And he says gridlocked on 170. Oh, yeah. And that I was at 850. He went, he went white mud and went, or maybe came in on him. Weird. I don't know where he lives. He lives in McGrath. Oh, okay. So it's close to me. I guess we could have carpooled. But, but I but came then, in early. Yeah, you've also yeah. got two guys. <laughs> yeah. And he's oh, not going to stick yeah. around for, That's right. <laughs> for two guys. That's right. <laughs> Half the time, you, I, should, I should Uber home anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the excuse. <laughs> Actually, with that, uh, ESD <laughs> is presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. Get in there. Yeah, Get there the lime in there today. There you uh, go. I got the laptop out ready for 1015 when the madness gets going so I can start watching. I don't even know who the first one is. You're filling it out right now. It's, uh, the first one is uh, Mississippi State and Michigan State, 1015. Yeah, which is a pretty good one. Not bad. Eight, I like nine, that game. I think it is, hey? It's Because uh, that could go both ways. It's, it's a nice, tight game. It should be a fun early first match. I'm loving today with the weather. Is that oh, if you can, just the, today is the day to just have these games going on. on curl up. Well, and... This, the start of March Madness, there is the, from what I hear, one of my good friends is a urologist. This is more men book their vasectomies at this time of year <laughs> than any other point in, uh, in, in, in the calendar year. So they can just sit at home and watch March Madness. And, What's and, four straight days? No yeah. need to move yeah. at all. And it's yeah. all day. Like it's 10, 15. I can't remember when the last game tips off. It's usually like eight thirty or something. So it's going close to eleven o'clock. Like mm-hmm. you get like thirteen hours of oh. just basketball with one little break from like four to five. I think yeah. that's catch usually when there's yeah. you catch your breath. I think Doctor Phil sometimes pops <laughs> off the screen. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, and then you get going for the rest of the night. Uh, okay, last tip off is eight oh five. So two hours. It takes you. 10 yeah. o'clock if it's a little crazy maybe a little bit longer and it's the washington state cougars taking on drake at the end of the oh night. wazoo eh? the wazoo i i wanted to take drake in the upset but i couldn't go against my boys wazoo drake drake funny of him entering the tournament on his own to take on teams <laughs> <laughs> like i all, all power to you man i uh by the way the keyword for the est hangout or not the est hangout the est flyaway presented by flyyg and the lvcva that's going to come up uh, come up just after a 10 o'clock it looks like the text line is operational at this moment so as long as that holds on uh we'll have no problem with it but yeah just after 10 o'clock, we will do the keyword to Las Vegas. Also, thank you to you and Cassian for defending my word from a couple days ago when uh, dining being a proper oh, word. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's crazy not to. Like, um, so uh, Vegas. A, is... a few other people do not think dining would would be associated with Vegas. They think it made no sense. Um, Even the, and... the their legendary buffets, you yeah. know? Like, ah. it's, you know, it doesn't always have to be, f- like, five-star. High-end mm-hmm. dining. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. There's a lot of high-end dining, but you're right. Yeah, There's yeah. those buffets, and some people just don't think that that's a, a worthy word associated with eggs because you could dine in Edmonton. <laughs> those people, hey. <laughs> what one of those, I... one of those <laughs> even went through the words and said, uh, yeah, these are all good. <laughs> I, I went through them. I thought they were they were fine, Maddie. That's uh, they were all had. You could relate them to the city of Las Vegas. Yes, I was hoping for a, maybe a you know, 
Maybe a little CSI Vegas, like you know, okay. a, a Grissom in there. Something oh, like you wanted me to go with some of the TV yeah, shows and stuff. Yeah, that would have been a bad idea. Yeah, so. There's a couple I have to still change. I haven't sent them out. There's a couple I need to add. Um, God, I, I love that show. Based off my recommendations, or uh, no, one was from one listener. The other was, I think, from Gager. I think you mentioned it on air. I think I added it in. Um, so I have two for oh, sure. Okay, okay. That are not Grissom. Flex in. Them. I gotta, yeah, I'm flexing them in. Flex them in. Because I also I think I have a couple double words by mistake. <laughs> that happens. On. So now yeah, I could flip those ones out and put these it's ones in. It's tougher than people would think and to, so, to com- compare this one, contest. One, I'm very disappointed in myself I didn't have it in initially. <laughs> the other one I think is actually just going to be a fun one. What's, uh, when does it end? April 25th will be our last day of qualifying. The 26th will be the grand prize draw. That's um, fun. So if you've qualified, I know you guys had issues today calling people with kind of yeah. easy trivia. On the 26th, if you have been one of those people that have qualified, keep your phone on. Because if they call you man, <laughs> and you don't pick up, we go to the next it's person. It's one thing to miss yeah. the qualifying calls, yes. to, but to miss or that call Or kind of easy trivia, be, you know. You never be able to forgive yeah. yourself. You can do kind of easy trivia tomorrow, the day sure, after. There's sure, a lot sure. of time. Uh, that April 26th call, you're going to be regretting if... If you don't pick up that day. Um, so how much are you, like, you're just slowly filling that out. Yeah. You're just Do you nibbling, fill up brackets? Nibbling around the edge? I have I told you, I, well, before, yeah. I, I've done it but, once. Um, I don't watch, I, I just don't have time to, I'm, I'm consumed with other sports. College basketball is, although enjoyable to watch, it's completely different from the NBA. They, they miss, which makes it way more exciting, but it's, uh, it's tough to... That's really. the beauty of the bracket is yeah. you have no idea what you're doing and you have a better <laughs> chance of doing better than me. Probably. Who was tinkering with his bracket all night last night and probably screwed it up completely. And you get that one good pick and yep. then you're a genius. And then it's as long as you don't do like the Tommy, can I just see this quickly? Yeah. Tommy took just now he's joking, he didn't care, but 14 Colgate to get to the final four. Like Well, Tom, I, don't yeah. go that crazy. But as long as you're going with <laughs> Colgate You're looking at those numbers and going yeah. realistic, one through yeah, Ten. but he just said he doesn't watch, and even he's yeah, Colgate. Goes to play. Like, Colgate. Well, Colgate. Yeah. <laughs> they're just hotel management guys. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. So, but that you can fill it <laughs> but out. I, you have a I chance. mean, I, I, Zach doesn't do anything, and he filled a bracket. So is Trev. They don't watch. And I mean, you're a Duke fan. <clears throat> yes, I am. Um, uh, I mean, I went like when I was down in Raleigh. I uh, I went to both campuses. So I went to North Carolina and Duke. Oh. Um, North Carolina campus was excellent. Um, but m- more laid back. Duke was was really pristine and mm-hmm. and like all manicured. It's a, rich it's a huge, ri- yeah. It's it was a hoity-toity school. I felt There's no way out of place. Say, I yeah. yeah, I felt so. Uh, and even Wake Forest is down the road too, I believe. So, um, pretty cool little place. But uh, yeah, Duke, I felt out of place. Tar, I'm more of a Tar Heel guy. I think. Tar Heel Nation. Yeah. <laughs> He has the hang of his over for today. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, there's a lot of Tar Heels I'm finding. My brother was kind of a Tar Heels guy. I don't know if he still relates to them as much. Uh, Successful Fox program, I mean, traditionally. And, and players yeah. that have come from there and everything. It's, it's one they of the top historic programs. Eh? Oh, it, it, in college sports, how many rivalries are bigger? Kentucky, Kansas, and basketball is big. Obviously, the Iron Bowl, Auburn, Alabama. You've got... Michigan State or Michigan Ohio State, Louisville, Kentucky, even with a. I won't put them in the same no. category yeah. personally. I think that like I would. That's the group at the top in my mind for tiers for basketball for both for both. basketball football. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Football, because I went I, I, Alabama Auburn. I retract me, I my Louisville. Yeah. Uh, Alabama <laughs> Auburn. I don't think big of for basketball. I think of that for football. And it's still a rivalry there, Duke, but not North national, Carolina, it's yeah. basketball. Sure, Kansas, sure. Kentucky's basketball. You don't care when Tar Heels in Yeah, Blue Michigan, Devils. Ohio State's football. football. I don't I don't know what schools have the full where it crosses all of it. Where St. It's John's big, and big. Uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Longwood. But North Carolina, dude, it's just intense. <laughs> yeah. It matters. I saw the, the Zion shoe blowout in that game Right, and, and then the amount of tickets that were going for that. The, I remember we were on air, we were talking about the price of tickets to get into. And where was it at? Was it at Duke? That game? I'm trying to remember that and one. And the shoe blowout. And you recall, yeah, he I made that, that step, yeah. and it just, I mean, it exploded. The sneaker game took a hit that yeah. night. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. you know, but um, that, that was a big event. And there were the who's who shoe. there. And to get into the building that night was your paying. You know, billions and billions of dollars. Well, we the uh, it was Dean Smith, right? Dean Smith was yes. the, so I remember when he retired. Like there was a 
a midnight vigil at at uh, at North Carolina where all the students were standing outside the building with the candles, like crying. He was, he was, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't gone. No. He just retired, and it was this big, huge thing. I remember. I was like, wow, this guy is revered. For going to a college for however many years you do, depending on what you take. It, it is like a lifetime. Like, you yeah. know, you're only there for a brief moment in your whole life. But yeah. that, that that's such taken apart as it's such a family. Uh, and obviously not so much, I guess, up here in Canada. You go to college, oh. you're like, oh, I'll get a job and I'll be an adult or whatever. But that's, you, you could find a wife at college in the States. You can have kids. You can get like, the whole thing. Yeah, it's your uh, life. Uh, yeah. It is. It's how you, you're introduced to people. I played uh, with, a, <laughs> I can say his name, Rhett Gordon, um, Boyd Gordon's older brother. Right. Okay. So uh, he married a girl from the States. Uh, she, <laughs> And it, his, the the family he married into is quite well off. I don't know if I've told this before, but um, he uh, he goes to parties like, and everyone introduces each other. Hi, this is this is Eric. He went to Harvard. Oh, this is Joaquin. He went to Pepperdine or whatever. And so the he gets introduced, and so the I don't think the father in law likes him too much, or as, the way Rhett talks about it anyway. And Rhett, <laughs> Rhett gets introduced as uh, this is Rhett, he's a hockey player. He didn't go to college. Oh, <laughs> so it, shoulders that, drop across no, the room. Yeah, that's how he's. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's part of life. I mean, um, yeah, the juries. Uh, uh, Jack, who plays uh, in Carolina now, I played with Ted and obviously Chris. Um, their all their whole family went went to Harvard, from his wife to the juries to all of them. Yeah, their all legacies, the, yeah. You don't have much the, choice, I guess. No, 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 you are, have to you go have there, to, right? Yeah. So. Well, it's always funny when it's um, what is it? It's uh, recruiting day, signing day. Yeah. And you got the players with their hats. And there's always that one video every year where the son or the kid takes the one hat and the mom's not happy. Yeah. She's like, this year I think it was some some mom was, or it was a couple years ago that it was just resurfaced. But she had an an Alabama shirt on or something. And he put on an Auburn hat. Oh, no And you could just see the disgust in her face. Like, her son's going to college. A scholarship, all this. But in her mind... She just defend. He just defended the family, mm-hmm. and you can't. Why are you doing only. that? There's nothing yeah. much else. Relationship and frustrated, yeah. and but it's you're born into whatever school you are, and that's the school you should be going to for life. And your kids should be going to that school, and your grandkids should be going to that school, and that yeah. is life. Yeah. I wish we don't. Do we have something like that in Canada? No. Like legacy? I just find we like, don't have any legacy yeah. things like that. No one we? cares about their universities or no. colleges that like that. Yeah. I'm sure people that have gone to the U. They're very proud that they went to the U. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Huskies, you know, I'm a proud Duke. I was only there for like a year and a half. I saved all that, but I don't think there's the like you're going to U of A when you have a kid, yeah. and like looking at your it's kid, like you're going to you U of A, go like you got to go there. So, yep. look who made it in. Look who made you're it in. Him. Murray McCourt made it here. I didn't yeah. realize that uh, EST was in Calgary. Uh, thanks, Lieutenant Eric, for jumping in. we got Murray McCourt from the VIP Golf Show, uh, April 28th, returning right here on Edmonton Sports Talk, as well as uh, from the Ranch Golf and Country Club. Making oh. it in. Those roads are something. We were talking. Oh. Me and Gage were talking about that. Which that way did you come? wild. Well, I uh, was at the Good Life Fitness on 23rd, uh, 23rd and Rabbit Hill Road okay. there. Yeah. And I left myself all kinds of time. I thought I was going to be here like 22, 8.35, get to hang out a little bit before the hangout. And holy, it took me an hour to get yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. That was unbelievable. I stopped at the Petrocan across, just, and it was yeah. no one. I came out of there, it was packed. And so I, I took white mud and then came in 178th. 178th? Oh, yeah. I never thought about 178th. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize it was like 170th. You get on uh, like all that construction there at uh, by the mall. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. yeah. That's uh, so, it took me forever to get through there, but getting on Twilliger Drive, getting out of... See, yeah, uh, you got to go middle lane, then go to the left. Get to the left. And then, yeah. then it's uh, it's crazy. Ooh. Last time I was here, we were watching curling. Now uh, got <laughs> I got Sports Center on right now because at ten fifteen, it's the first game of March Madness. Yes, uh, you know I was listening coming in. I'm a Tar Heels fan. Oh my yeah. god! All right. Well, yeah. hold on. Like, why are there so many Tar Heel fans in Edmonton though? Just in general. Well, I've been a Tar Heels. Fan. All the teams that I like, I've liked them since I've been this tall. It was yeah. because who was on TV? Like, you got to remember Michael Jordan yeah. played yeah. for the Tar Heels, and so I, I was trying to figure out what year that years that he would have been. That would have been early eighties, yeah. Like eighty one, eighty two, if I guess. So I'd have been like ten years old. 
and you know those so, are the ones on tv like right yeah. so that's who you you like and i'm a pretty loyal guy so you know i've been a target yeah, but everyone's a target plus in junior the, the, to 84. the nike store mm-hmm. in portland um the the michael jordan area there was not only bull stuff obviously but there was a lot of north carolina stuff so i had purchased some north carolina hats and jerseys and so I'm just running to so many North Carolina fans for the last like 48 hours. <laughs> I just, oh. We're in Edmonton. Like there should be somebody come up. Give me Kansas. Give me Kentucky people. But well, it's all North Carolina. Probably a lot of Gonzaga fans around here too. <laughs> That's the big one. I yeah, think. I think so. Because they were, you know, the Cinderella story there mm-hmm. for a while, and then they became one of the best teams in the in the country. And They're the best basketball school almost out of the major conferences. Sure. But yeah. you never trust them to t- go all the way. Yeah. I love well, the Jimmy Kimmel bit that it doesn't exist, too. Like, he says, Gonzaga's a, a made-up place. It's not real. <laughs> well, like there's so many Seahawk fans here, too, right? And, and Gonzaga in Washington State. Yeah. Like it's why I'm a Washington State fan is because it's all you see on TV for, like, CBS, Fox. Those affiliates are all from Spokane. Right. Or at least mm-hmm. I had for growing up before we got the Seattle ones. And it was... Uh, Pullman is just south of Spokane, so mm-hmm. they all talk Washington State yeah, Cougars. Yeah, yeah. So that, I've always loved that football team. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, so then Gonzaga in Spokane, Washington Huskies, I get, Seattle Seahawks. It makes sense yeah. in this part of the world for, for that, but not North Carolina's far away. <laughs> right. But so, same thing when I was growing up, I was I'm a, a Duke big, fan. Also. Uh, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. Well, <laughs> Dallas Cowboys were on TV every single yeah. Sunday because they were the Dallas Cowboys. So it's just who well, you. That's why I'm a Manchester United fan largely, is because in the late '90s you didn't get a lot of soccer games right. on TV. David Beckham was on March mm-hmm. Manchester United. Well, that so probably like, helps. Yeah, he was on a lot. They were on a Skulls, lot. So watch them. Beckham. Who's the other guy? Ryan Giggs. Giggs. Yeah. Like uh, Gary Neville. When uh, when I was over Van, in the UK, Van Nistelrooy. They, yeah, they were Van Nistelrooy. Uh, yeah, so that was a powerhouse. I I don't. You'd always see the murals of of Manchester United where you went to, and good team. That was fun to watch. They were the first team ever to win all three championships in England. Win the treble, it's called. Until uh, City did it last year, but City's being charged with 115 charges uh, in soccer. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> they cheated. Really. Well, they'll, they'll they won't get any sort of punishment. Me and Eric have talked about this. They should be like this. If this if this wasn't Man City, they probably would get the book thrown at them and get relegated. Oh yeah, yeah they yeah. cheated. There's 115 charges against them. Somehow they'll get off. Somehow they'll spend the money and get off, and everything will be the fine. New England Patriots of soccer. <laughs> Worse. 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 Wow. I love the Premiership. the 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 cathedrals where they play are spectacular. You go to other stadiums and they're i mean some of the newer ones are better but you're right on top of them like it's it's more like a hockey arena mm. than a than an actual football stadium our text line is now working because all the texts are starting to fly in oh. <laughs> like it's just maybe it was the word. our text line and the, we're not getting all these texts like i'm seeing the keyword from this morning and <laughs> they're all starting to fully come in so uh we should have no problem when we get to our text line a little bit or uh, keyword a little bit later with the text line because uh it's now up and operational which is good news well, you and I are on the same page soccer-wise because, as you know, I'm not a big soccer fan at all. But if I had a favorite team in soccer, it's Manchester United because it's the only team I really... So I do look once in a while and just see where they're at in the standings and mostly because I don't know who any of the other teams are. But they were the team that was on TV when you when I was younger. Not right. the best season, but did defeat Liverpool on Sunday in, a, in an epic FA Cup quarterfinal Isn't game. Liverpool... LTE's team? It is. Oh, Isn't it Klopp? See, Did good. he say he's coming back for another year? Is that... No. no. Did he? Oh, I don't know. I thought he said he was... Well, as of yesterday, it was a no. No? Okay. Um, there's been talk of, like, he joked that... Because they've brought in a new head person who's going to oh, run it. Okay. And he's like, the guy knows not to ask me if I'm returning. Okay. Um, I don't want to yell to Eric and ask if that's true, because if it's not true, I don't want to get his hopes up and crush him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing anything quickly. It's just a quick look. So um, as United fan, he's a great manager, but I'm very excited for him to be done. Mm-hmm. How long has he been there for? Eight, nine years? Yeah. Maybe 10? And they really he's haven't built. done much in that time span, have they? Well, they won the, the Premier League title for the first time since the early 90s. And they won a Champions League, which is the best of Europe. Yeah. So they and they've been uh, they've been the second best team in England in that time. City being the best, 
Um, they had, they didn't, I, I, Eric would disagree with me on this. I, they didn't win enough for the squads that they had, I would say. Well, second, he didn't get enough Second done. best for yep. Man U is not good enough. It, no, and that's, yeah. but so it's like, he is still going to go down though as one of the greatest managers to have managed. And I'm very, very pumped that he's gone. And he could have been a Manchester United manager. They had a meeting with him years ago. But he got turned off because the people running at the time, they were a joke. Still are some people that are a joke. Um, but he said something about he wants to make Man U like Disney or something. And Klopp, oh. being a soccer guy, a football, like he doesn't want to hear that. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'm staying away from you. I don't care about commercial interest. I care about the football. And he didn't come to United. So we, we bottled that one, as the English would say. Isn't that the way it is, though? I mean, you look at all sports coaches and gms and uh, there's a little bit of a shelf life there that even as if you've had the success and you know sometimes it just wears out and you need a new voice you need a new guy uh, in charge it's just kind of the way it goes sometimes but the shelf life keeps getting smaller and smaller it depends on the <laughs> there's sport too hockey. Hockey. It is, yeah. well no like you're hockey right. like i want to pull there's not a lot of guys who've been on their bench for more than three seasons well, the the it's really quick in hockey now. If before thank American Thanksgiving, I'd say if you lose seven or eight games in a row, there's a good chance you're getting replaced. Yeah. Like how that's three coaches guys. in hockey. That's though. coaches, yeah, yeah, not GMs. But yeah, you're you're right. The shelf life on coaches in hockey right now. Yeah, is just... and I mean, even I heard uh, like uh, Mike Tomlin um, for the first time all. Uh, <laughs> Since he's been coaching the Steelers, there was actually talk this year of is is his job in jeopardy, yeah. you mm-hmm. know? And here's a guy that still made the playoffs with uh, what they, you know, that. So it's amazing. Sheldon Keefe with the Leafs is the fifth longest serving coach Jeez. in the National Hockey League. Yeah, where is uh, Blackhawks coach on that list? Because it's got to get be up there. Now as well, and they he's pretty Middleton? he's about mid he's he's middle he's Luke? about mid because yeah. so uh, John Cooper's the longest 2013 yeah, Mike yeah, Sullivan yeah. at 2015 um, I'll be intrigued to see if he keeps his job moving Who? forward Mike Sullivan mm, just yeah. with the changes is it going to be with Ke- will Dubas want his own person or does mm. he let him just keep going if they're going to tear things down Jared Bednar um, it seems like yesterday yeah. Patrick Watt quit on them. And yeah, Bednar, he's been there since 2016. Rob Brandemore in 2018. Shelton Keefe in 2019. Don Granado with Buffalo, 2021. March of 21. So we're talking only four years. Yeah. Or three years. Three years, sorry. And he's the sixth longest serving yeah, tenure. So in crazy. three years, every other team's had a new coach. Yeah. And then, yeah, it goes uh, Dave Haxtell, Andre Turney, Martin St. Louis, Bruce Cassidy, John Tortorella, Pete DeBoers, Paul Maurice, Luke Richardson. And he was just hired, too, it feels yeah. like. Chris Knobloch is has one, two, three, four, five, six coaches who are younger than him now on a bench, including four of them are in terms, but uh, they'll all have new jobs and stuff. But yeah, Chris Knobloch's yeah. not even in the bottom five of tenured coaches in the National Hockey League. What do you think of Luke Richardson? Love him. Yeah? Yeah. I, I think he is an absolute fabulous coach for the Hawks at, at this time. I'm really curious if he's going to be the coach once the corner turns. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're all the rest of the prospects are there and they're starting to turn the corner and be be that team. I, I think they're going to give him the opportunity. Like, I, I, I think he's going to be there for at least two, three, four more years mm-hmm. and, and maybe longer if he can show he's that guy. But uh, with the, these young guys, they love him. Yeah. You know, I saw some video of practice yesterday. Kevin Korczynski, the young 19-year-old defenseman, he's he's 19 years old. Doesn't turn 20 until July and, and uh, you know, seventh overall draft pick. He, the guy's going to be so good. Mm-hmm. But he's struggling a little bit in the D-zone coverages here and there. Um, you know, got goals in back-to-back games from the back end. So, I mean, he's going to be fine, but... Richardson was telling you, man, you got to battle harder in front of the net. You got to earn your position. Mm-hmm. And so th- th- I saw some video yesterday of battle drills in practice yesterday. And boy, like that message was getting across because if he battles in the games mm-hmm. like he was battling his teammates, man. And, and you know, so I some of those young guys are really starting to buy in. And others, st- like Lucas Reichel has taken a little longer, mm-hmm. but now he's just come back up from... Rockford again and playing with the confidence that Luke's asking him to play with and, and things like that. So 
his message is absolutely getting across to the to the players. They they work hard. They, I mean, do they have the talent to win most nights? Of course not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's coming, but the, he gets those guys to to really work their tails off every night. Luke was an awesome. Like as a teammate, he was unbelievable. Uh, un, uh, he saw he was the first guy. I think Louis DeBrus talked about this too when they were when they were playing the Hawks a, a, a while ago. Just he was the first veteran that I noticed who worked extremely hard all the time, and I was like, oh my gosh, that guy's yeah. you know he's an established NHLer, and look how hard he's working. Yeah. And so that that type. Of message, and I've seen him actually do drills in practice, and he doesn't look out of place, right. you know. Like, so works out extremely hard, and it's tough to, you know, you don't want your coach. It's maybe that Rod Brendamore kind of kind of thing where God, the coach is in better shape than I am, right? So you don't want that. Um, but yeah, I, I wondered that too because I think he's the definitely the type of guy to install that uh, that work ethic and what it takes. Um, but I'd like to see him get over that once they do kind of turn the corner that he can be part of some maybe some of that success. I sure as well. hope he is. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Uh, another recent story on a road trip. Connor Bedard shows up in the gym at the hotel at 6 a.m. to get in a, a workout. Mm-hmm. Luke was already oh, yeah. in there working yeah. out. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, yeah that's uh, – and hey, that's leading by example. I mean, he's a he's a coach, not a player, but, man, your coach better not be out working you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That'd be, that wouldn't be well, very good. Well, yeah, and that, that filters through the rooms, right? And he goes, well, coach was working out at 6 a.m. Everyone's like – there's almost like a, oh, I'm, I am I, I feel a little guilty. I'm not doing the same, yeah. right? So yeah, I remember going to a lot of other morning skates uh, when Bookberger was assistant coach, and he was the same thing. Oh like, yeah, he he was just working his butt off in practices and skating with the guys, and when they were doing skating drills, he was right there doing it with the guys and and keeping up with them. Mm-hmm. And like holy, he could still play. That's uh, that's to sweat out some of the uh, the Stella Artois from the night before. Well, well that could be too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stella was his drink of choice, wasn't it? It is now. He's got mm. taps in his backyard. Um, oh. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, he gets uh, <laughs> upset. Well, he uh, he talks to our my our buddy uh, Mo, who's uh, with the first round for for kegs to get. Oh, so if boy. there's no, uh, if you go to a first round and there's no there's no Stella, it's at Bucky's place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna be in Chicago in a couple Perfect. of days. Uh, so you know, send Luke a text and. Give yeah, my number yeah, and okay. go. I'll go work out with him. No, oh, that would be a, yeah. That I'd be sore the next day probably if I well, did that. So not you. Well, <laughs> today because I was on the hangout, uh, had to get a little earlier day, and with everything else I got going on today, I upped my gym time today. I was in the gym in my basement at four thirty this morning. Jesus, getting her, getting her like done. Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. yeah, and then helped get my kid off school, and then stopped at the gym to uh, at Good Life. On the way here, it's to a double get, gym today. To get well, I, every day, yeah. But I do to get in. I have a gym at home, but I don't have all the equipment that my trainer wants me to do uh, for lifts at my house. So I stopped at the gym to get in the lifts that I didn't have uh, at home. I can't even just wake up at four thirty. Yeah. Let alone wake up at four thirty to do a workout. Yeah. So I yeah, I get, get all my cardio at home and probably seventy percent of my workouts in at home. And then, but I always got to stop in at the gym to get in the lifts I can't do at home. Jeez, yeah, You're making yeah. us look bad here. Get a gym out at the uh, at the ranch, maybe just. Uh... Well, our superintendent is a fitness junkie as okay. well, and yeah. so he now lives on property at the ranch. So we have that old barn that you probably mm-hmm. hit a few times left at yeah. number ten. He's talking about upstairs in there building like an old school Rocky type gym with like <laughs> punching bags and uh, uh, all that kind of stuff up there and. If he does that, I'll definitely. Would that be those. something at golf courses? Is there anything like that, like a like a workout facility that's maybe more golf specific that uh, people can? Well, Jordan Jeske from the project, not too far away yep. from here, he is a golf specific yeah. trainer. Uh, I've worked with him at, off and on for for years. Um, absolutely, he does programs for golf yeah. specific uh, to you know to work on the muscles that are important for you know your turn and all, all that kind of stuff and yeah it's great and mobility stuff he does a lot of mobility yeah. stuff with you and, and whatnot so 
yeah, he's a great guy uh, to work with for that. If anyone in the city is looking for specific golf fitness. Well, I mean, I just think everyone goes golf, you know, that maybe they'll go to the range, hit a bucket of balls and putt a bit, then go out and, you know, men's league hockey, you know, you, you give the groins a little stretch and go, it's, <laughs> you don't prepare, right. you nope. know, so I would think, you know, if I could, I mean, obviously it's, there's time restraints in this, but if you actually went and warmed up with, at a, at a true facility that, that helped with your swing, get limber, um, I think that would almost be more beneficial than hitting a, a bucket of balls you, before you uh, before you hit. Do you know those like exercise free exercises in like city parks and stuff? Have you ever yeah, seen those? Yeah. There's a golf course in Olds that has it right before like oh, their really? first holes. A couple like, of those th- three Sturgeon things Valley where you can do too, yeah. do they? Yeah. Where you could do a couple of little workouts and it's just the like metal apparatuses that say if you do this, yeah. this yeah. is what. And they have some a little bit of equipment for you to. Do a little mm-hmm. bit of training before you hit the yeah hit the rain or hit the rounds. I I do have Jordan on early on in the on the VIP yep. golf show once we get the season started uh, every year and yep. that's one of the things we talk about is early in the season what do you need to do with your body to get, kind of get your body used to swinging golf clubs mm-hmm. again what should you be doing when you get to the golf course to warm yeah. properly warm up and get your body ready to play order two and, white claws <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll take well, two and I'll get to the t- and t- you know stretch and a can. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's hilarious. Jordan goes through this whole big spiel of what you should be doing and whatnot. I play golf with Jordan from time to time, and he's a trunk slammer. <laughs> I mean, he rolls yeah, in 100 slammer. miles an hour yeah. into the parking lot and runs to the first tee. It's like, what happened to all these little donkey kicks and all this other stuff you're telling people they should be doing before? Uh, you know, life gets in the way yeah. of that sometimes, right? But uh, they do they do? do the golf society does a fun golf tournament yeah. uh, at the ranch, uh, sip and rip. I oh. did it a couple of times. Um, we had a good time with those. They were always a lot of fun. Yeah. I won the fifty fifty one year actually. Oh, that's wow. a good win. Um, and then I won AirPods the next year. I had back to back really? wins. Yeah, actually, it's funny because the next year we're at the table and the table we're at, the other person won the first prize, and they got like some pizza from some place out in like Edson or something. <laughs> and then he went to the bathroom and then I won. I got AirPods. AirPods I come back and the buddies are like, he just won AirPods. Oh. He's like, do you want to trade? No, I'm no, good. I'm good. Oh. One year uh, back when I was a GM of a junior <laughs> hockey team, we're playing in drum heller and my ticket got uh, pulled to go do the shootout in between <laughs> periods. Oh yeah. So they just, Freshly, uh, yeah. Zambon, the ice is all clean, and it was really wet when I, I go out there to do this. And I'm in the dressing room with our team, so I don't hear all the announcements about what the prizes are or whatever. But the hole is like this <laughs> big, and I, so usually when the hole is barely bigger than the puck, the prize is going to be pretty big, right? So I assume that it's a, a really, <laughs> really, really big prize. I dunk it. I, I, no I shoot it in. So I think I've won something. I think I got a car. <laughs> I've won a, a fancy trip somewhere. So I, t- I start a little run and then slide on the soaking wet ice on my butt, and I'm, like, swimming with, my, with the stick. Like, I'm <laughs> celebrating, like, wow, this is crazy. What did I win? It was called, I found out this after, obviously. It was called Shoot for a year of cheer, I won a Big Mac meal a week for a year at the McDonald's in Drumheller. It's <laughs> a gift I that keeps on giving. <laughs> was soaked <laughs> for that. Oh my gosh. I thought I won a car, a trip, like something, some big cash. I thought something, but oh my God. And I would need a Big Mac for all the tea in China, <laughs> let alone drive for to Drum Heller to get one. Oh, that's oh, great. Boy. And it was a week, so I couldn't even order food from McDonald's and feed a whole bunch of Big Macs to the hockey oh, team after the yeah, game because yeah. I, I... You got 52, get, but you yeah, can only get it once, once a week. Like, oh, man, what a disaster. <laughs> but you sunk it. Yeah, you sunk you it. That's in. pretty I sweet. I did. But How I many Big Macs did you end up getting? Zero. I Aww. wouldn't need a Big Mac. Oh, no chance would I eat a Big Mac. I actually love a good Big Mac. I'm not going to lie. I've, you could probably count on your hand how many Big Macs I've had in my life. Really? Yeah. Not a big, Big Mac not person. Big no. Mac Josh Clausen, yeah. did he eventually have one? He didn't have one until he was at least in his 40s. Yeah. The Bear Boys may have made him have one, and he may have tried one on air, but he went through like 40 years without having one. Well, I'm at zero right now. <laughs> You've never had a Big Mac? No. 
I wouldn't You're missing out a little bit. No, I'm not. They're not bad. Well, They're once in a while. I'm a, I'm a picky eater in the first place. So if I was going to have a burger, it would be like a burger and a bun, basically. Maybe some bacon or something. But but Big Mac, that's not a burger. What the heck is that that they feed It's got the, two patties. Yeah, but is it real beef or is it sawdust? Well, that's a different question. That's, <laughs> that's still... I don't know. I'll eat it. I'll eat a lot. Of, I'll eat a lot of burgers. I don't, they're all good to me. Different ones are better, but Trump Heller. And where were you at the time? Like, what was the drive from? Well, Oak Tokes. That's a bit of a drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A bit yeah. Of a drive. yeah I'd maybe have done it once or twice. Well, like, yeah, you could have gone. They have a great golf well, course there. Oh, that's the th- I've heard that. The, I've heard Drum Heller has a fantastic golf course. Nine of the 18 holes. Hey, yeah. The first nine holes is a, just a classic. Old small town Alberta, you know, nine hole golf course, and then many, 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 many years later, they built a new nine up in the Hoodoos, and it is absolutely the really? most unique, spectacular nine holes that you'll ever play. I, mm. it, you know, those magazines out there are the hardest golf holes in the, the uh, that are just fake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's nine holes the back nine at Drumheller. <laughs> okay, it, you look and you, you're standing on this hoodoo, and you got to hit it onto that hoodoo, and then the greens on that hoodoo, and it's like, man, how am I supposed to do this? This is it, it's tough. It's target golf, baby. Oh, is it target golf? It is really tough, but it's spectacular because it's so unique, and it's right here in Alberta. Portions of this hour of the ESD Angle brought to you by the Hive Product Marketing, official merch partner of ESD, promotional products that bring the buzz. Check them out, thehighproductmarketing.com. Matt Awanek, Maria McCourt, Walking Gage with you here on the ESD Hangout, live on iHeartRadio, on TuneIn, on EdmontonSportsTalk.com, as well as live on YouTube. Um, we are now 30 minutes away or so from March Madness kicking off. and uh, <laughs> I'll just be all in on Michigan State taking on Mississippi State. I forgot who it was. Whatever. Yeah. It, there's okay. there's 16 you can, games You can today. watch Gager and I. There's 16 <laughs> games. Well, yeah, you, you guys will have to carry the rest of the show. You'll, you've already carried it mostly, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get you to carry the rest. This is this is like, I, I think every week I've been coming on here saying this is like one of my favorite weeks of the year. Because like Scotty's is great, then mm-hmm. Breyer. F1 has now kicked off, but I don't have a favorite week yet of F1. And then, but then it goes into March Madness, and then a few weeks is going to be Masters. Like it's just it's, everything's it's a hitting. Good time of year. What's your baseball favorite F one weekend? Start, yeah. Well, we want to get to the baseball quickly here. Um, <laughs> like, is there one right now? Of the I like schedule when it goes to Europe. It's, but is there like the weekend? You're like, this is the weekend for me. I mean, you're not there yet. Not the, no, no. It. I like when it goes to Europe because it gets back to the normal schedule, right? Because I don't mind the normal schedule. The even now everything's at night, right? So it'll be Saturday night. Will be the race. I like. I like getting up really early on the Sunday, like Eric, and, and watching the and watching. Yeah, the I like I, 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 the Saturdays that we've had to start this year. They just feel off. Yeah, watching the race on a Saturday, not a Sunday. Yeah, and, and I I love. I, I guess you know what I like after the break because in F one they have like a summer break, and so it's usually three to uh, three weeks off to to four. Um, the week after that, because usually NFL starts too. So you have the race, you get up early on the Sunday, you watch the race, and then you start getting ready for the NFL football games and stuff. And it just, uh, it's a great day of sports that day. So the question I got for the race is like, he's talking about Masters is upcoming and, you know, there's four majors in in golf and, and you know, just some bigger tournaments. Is there anything like that in in car racing where it's like, oh my gosh, this is like the race and and. If so, what makes it different than the others? In uh, in North America, there is, I would say. Yeah. Because Daytona 500 and Indy 500 yeah. are your big races. Yeah. Those matter. And I don't know why Daytona 500 matters. <laughs> I honestly, like, I don't know yeah. what made that one so yeah, special. I don't know fine. if it's the kickoff to the NASCAR season. Mm-hmm. Um, but Daytona 500 is a big deal. And winning the Daytona 500 matters. Yeah, it's a legendary status. And Indy 500 for IndyCar, it's a big deal. NASCAR even goes play races at that track, mm-hmm. I believe, at some point of the year. So, so yeah. But then I'll let you take over the F1. Because yeah, I've of heard of Indy, and I, would, I expected maybe that to be an answer. But why? I mean, because I don't know. 
anything about cars. I, I mean, there's the the legendary tracks, right? I think you could say uh, Monaco is a big deal, although it's not usually the the best race. That would be more of the the qualifying because it's so hard to overtake uh, on that track. Um, you go to Silverstone, you know, um, some of the other like high speed tracks like Spa, Monza. But there's not that real Daytona five. I wouldn't say nope. there's a, a real Daytona five hundred one. Um, are the fields different in them, or do the same guys race in every race, or is there certain races where boy everyone's showing up to it like all twenty every all, twenty every every time same really? guys okay. yeah yeah we'll see if the same guys finish after a couple more weeks yep. but there's we talked about coaches leaving I think <clears> you're going to see a lot more drivers uh getting booted from their seats Ooh. over the next little bit too so it seems like everything's settled at red bull and max is the, the stories have stopped yeah big time he's he's basically said i'm riding this why would i leave the best car and marco has a, is staying i think yeah well and like that well it seemed like he agreed he's, to marco stay. said staying but adrian knew he said they're still up in the air he could be going to ferrari and that's a big deal then it's huge but then Lewis's guy, um, what's his name? Oh, Bono? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he might not be able to go with with Lewis no, this yeah. year or yeah. like after this year. And he might have to wait a couple years yeah. to follow Lewis, but they wanna they want him to come. But yeah, like F one from and somebody else could text in who's maybe followed a bit longer might know differently. But yeah, I don't think F one's got the Daytona five hundred. No moment yet. It's it's the whole year. I think you're, like Monaco is. It's also like you're racing through the streets of Monaco and you just like go and buy all these yachts. Yeah. With all this money. <laughs> yeah. That you're just looking at all the money that is a part of Monaco, and it's just. It's incredible to watch yeah. that part. Silverstone would be a decent one. Like that's a big deal. That's well, that's, that's the like getting up there. Of of F one. Right? Yeah. Where so, is Silverstone? In in the UK. So okay. that's. That would be a, and I mean, you look and it's outside of town and, you know, you see the campers all like it would be a, a big, almost a festival. A lot of them are even Red Bull ring um, in Austria. So, yeah, but I would have to say Silverstone. When they Monica, go to Italy. I mean, Monza's kind of like, yeah, there's, there's even something Japan. about being in Italy yeah. for that, that like, maybe it's just because everyone focuses on Ferrari and Ferrari's back home for that, though that's their home races. Yeah. But there's something about them being in Italy that elevates those races. I yeah, feel I would say that I could see. Yeah. I mean, even for like, cause you have all the guys from, from different areas. So, I mean, when, when Fernando goes back to Spain, it's a huge home race this weekend. It's Yuki Sonoda, like his face is plastered everywhere. Or no, it's no, uh, uh, Ricardo. Ricardo, sorry. It's Aussie. Yeah, so he's every, with Oscar Piastri, right? So um, I think your your home race is a big deal, and that kind of is your own little mini Daytona 500. Is there an advantage to the home guy? Does he know the no. track any better? From no, not? no. And more pressure. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's harder it's to harder. win. They got yeah. the crowd on their side, but yeah. I'm always intrigued how that impacts racers, yeah. if it impacts racers. Like, can you really hear the crowd when you're you in that car so. revving they around. They do. I know. Oh, really? Yeah. But how does, like, so that's what I'm intrigued by. Well, like, just imagine, like, 100,000 people cheering as you're you're going to hear yeah. that, right? Like, so. As loud as those cars are. They're not as loud wearing... as they once were. We were listening oh, to the, oh, I don't, oh, yeah, they should, I, I wish they I would go them. back to the V12s. It's just the, the scream audio. of these things. And I even remember, I don't know what the, what the engines were at the, I mean, even when they were here at the at the old airport, you could hear them in the south, right? You could oh, hear that. So uh, just the, those were the Indy cars. I think they were V8s at that point. I could be wrong. Hmm. But yeah, now they're down to the V6s and there's just not a... Yeah, there, there's a great interview. And I think sometimes certain drivers will be able to drive old vintage F1 cars, like it, whether it be Senna's, you know... It, mclaren or, or whatever it was and um lewis hamilton's doing an interview and someone's driving a v12 in the back and he just like he can hear it and he just stops talking right mm -hmm. he goes and he just listens to it and he goes ah <laughs> it, it, it was like a, listening to classical music for him wow. right he was just lost in the in the sound of a car i got a bunch of sounds i don't know if we can hear them <laughs> i don't know what this first one is but it has something flat 12 h16 a v12 v10 v8 v6 and the formula e oh 
I don't know what that one is. That's a... That's yeah, that does sound pretty good. 816 is next. Sounds more powerful. Like a funny car. V12 is next. Okay, this one's the... Huh. A lot of power there. See that. Ooh. How great. Like that. That's awesome. What's that one? V10. V8. Still sounds cool, but then you hear that the next one compared to what it is now. So this is what they're coming up is what they do now, V6. It's muffled. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like Anthony Handy right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the E and that's the electric, that's the electric one. Oh boy. <laughs> So those are the uh, those are the that's the history of engines with uh, with cars. So yeah, that's kind of cool actually. Man. Isn't the Tesla? <laughs> doesn't it? Or I thought I heard a. Nope, that went on there. By the way, what okay. the uh, there was a, an electric car that simulates the sound of like an old muscle car. Or, like yeah. you can get the software that'll. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that would make sense. Oh, hey, have you been by like fully electric cars? <laughs> Uh, they so scare me because they don't make a noise. I know. I'm mm. walking my dog sometimes, and I, I'm listening to either The Hangout or Dusty or whatever, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I go to well, cross the street, but I got to look because some I I don't have it blasting, but I you can't hear them at all. They're just know. creeping up on you. Hmm. Magic fans, just the streets full of those though. It just all be so quiet. Yeah, yeah. It's like the snow. Well, you know, when you walk out at night or whatever, and the snow is falling, and like everything seems a little. It just seems quieter. Yeah. And there'd be car. Like I love that, that time. So, but not to not this morning. That was terrible. See any accidents on the way? I did not. No. But I heard that there's a big accident. Ten car pile up uh, on Highway 16A coming into the oh. city by the dump. Highways make sense. Yeah, I saw some stuff on. Uh, Social media about Highway Two between Calgary and there, Edmonton, yeah. closer to Calgary. I guess they got just well. There was a winter storm, uh, snowfall warning the last couple of days yeah. that was basically east or west and south of Edmonton. Mm -hmm. We were lucky. We got we were fine the last couple of days, mm -hmm. um, but they got they got pelted. Well, they needed it though. So they needed. I mean, we all well, need the we moisture, kind of need it. So this should be good moisture, I would say, like a sure, good amount. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not too much, and, and when it wet, melts, yeah. it should go nicely into the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And the golf courses should be a little bit better, but it's yeah. just tell you, it all. Tell you what, if this forecast didn't turn, it's not gonna. Yeah, it, like it, two days ago, I mean, we saw the forecast. So we yeah, weren't planning on yeah. it, uh, on anything, but we were like. <laughs> We can open this weekend <laughs> if this forecast. If just, we were like last weekend, yeah, like on yeah. Sunday, Monday, we're like talking like if yeah. this forecast was going to stay decent, we could have opened like two days from now. But we we knew we weren't gonna because mm -hmm. we saw the forecast and we knew it. But it was like, man, that's how close you know yeah. it was. It's uh, to being like no snow and oh man, but. Uh, you know, this now stretch of whatever, 10, 10 days of cold weather now. But forecast this morning, I wake it, up and I look and I'm like, ooh, it's getting a little better. Yeah, it's supposed to stay like zero to minus four-ish. For a I bit. I think and for a while. what was, I was seeing, now this isn't jo from Josh Clausen, but it was like threes and fours are now eights. So oh, really? that's a big difference. In the highest I see right now to next Wednesday, zero degrees is yeah. their highest high. What's so. the what's the preparation of a golf course? What do you do first? Is there a is there like an order? Or are you doing like like Tarts green the preparation, greens. tee box? What are, what's the? Well, to be honest, a lot of that work is done back in the fall in terms of oh, spraying it to protect okay. it for the yeah. winter time and things like that. So. You know, we, we took a couple of tarps off yeah. Uh, oh, yeah? the other day just to kind of... Well, when you look like look, you, you, you tarps off all the time, right? <laughs> well, when you're working out twice a day in the morning before it's well, 7 o'clock. Listen, I'm busy booking golf tournaments. I'm not out there <laughs> moving tarps. Uh, I have, though, back in COVID days when, you know, we had no idea if or when we are going to be able to open stuff like that. We had this, our year-round staff was out there doing all that work. Uh, you know, we weren't bringing in other... 
other staff or anything like that. So yeah, that was different times out there with <laughs> shovels, shoveling off mm-hmm. snow off the tarps and, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to get the, so the tarps, of, we did a heavy top dress of sand this year, which we normally don't do. And then we have something called Inca mat and then tarps over top of that. So we peel off the tarps. Sometimes we'll let it sit. So the Inca mat is still on there. The sand is still on there, obviously. Then, so the tarp will end up coming off just depending on the weather. So much is weather dependent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I have an absolutely fabulous superintendent. I don't know anything about anything. I just, I just <laughs> listen to him talk for all the years we worked together and, you know, where I've been before. And, and so, you know, I understand what he's doing. But it's so, it's so much weather dependent on what what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he he thought about taking some more tarps off, but they're, uh, they're they're still frozen, and he was happy that they were still frozen. He's liking what he's seeing, so knock on wood, nice, nothing changes. So he thought, well, with this weather, we'll just leave it. Next warm up, then you know we'll peel the tarps, and uh, you know the big thing because we put that extra sand. He's got to work the sand in a little bit before we can open and things like that. But it won't take long. No, oh, okay. You know? and we're different than most uh, where. <laughs> we don't have members of the ranch, zero. So we don't make any money until green fees are coming in. So we're always the first or one of the very first golf courses to open. And because uh, uh, it's nice to make money, you got bills to pay. So in, in past years, we've even done things like we've actually moved snow off the golf course to open sooner. Uh, like cl- cleared cleared snow off the fairways, really, and things like that to to get open sooner because uh, you know we just needed to get open to bring in some revenue. So certainly not. It's early now. No interest in doing that now because we need the moisture and mm-hmm. things like that. And it's not much snow anymore anyway. So once the next warm up comes, it's gonna go so quick. It's, it, yeah, it's gonna go quick, and you know we'll get the tarps off, get the income mat off. Get that uh, sand worked in a bit, and doors will be open. Cool. Uh, we're minutes away for the keyword for the EST fly away to Las Vegas. Um, but Gager, is it a mistake, or is it the socks that you have two different colors? No, oh. I I ripped through. These are those uh, fancy socks. They got different things on them. Yeah, I I put one on and ripped through it, and uh, so I think I, I'm down a burger sock, and then I just grabbed a a hot pepper. Well, they so. work. I, you know what? I, I as a kid, I always wore mismatched oh, socks. Yeah? yeah, that was my thing. And um, yeah, I might it might be making a comeback. You know, I I like not having to try to look for another sock now. <laughs> like this isn't the first time I've done it because I've ripped a few lately. These are old socks, but um, now I'm like I I just grab what's there and really you roll them up together as pairs. Or well, I, it, you, it, you the, the socks go into the laundry, and I don't know what happens, but they you just don't. One. You'd lose them. <laughs> they're, they're, the, the I don't, dryer steals the socks. I have no idea. I have no idea. It's it's a common thing. I was uh, I was huh. hitting Costco and just buying straight socks all the time, so it didn't matter. But then I got a little fancy, got these ones, and now I'm like, so now I just don't care. I'm grabbing, it might be. Well, it can be a look. Some socks come in different looks, and they're, yeah. they're paired up that way. Yeah. That's why I was intrigued, because, like, it does work. No, I, But I was well, intrigued yeah. if they are meant that way, or no, if. I've been I've been rolling mismatches for a while with, with different things on there. I just got yeah, Homer see? Simpson on today. See? My, you must be a mentor of my son's, because he is different socks yeah every day now like, like mismatched Mis- yeah for sure yeah. he never wears matching socks and so see he got that from you nice yeah. nice are you here often enough uh, that you have a uh, your own slippers in the house here or how's that work yeah too? These oh, are, i, forgot I to brought bring these up yesterday. i brought these uh in these are my knock rounds my real deluxe ones are at home i'm i'm a slipper guy if oh, i if oh, i ever get invited to your place i i bring my slippers you bring your own slippers yeah. and then Holy. and uh, cuz there's nothing better than wearing your slippers in the house. It's great. Wow. Are you a slipper guy? I'm not. I have one pair of slippers. They're actually Homer Simpson's, weirdly enough, again, that, like, it's his face, and you put your foot in his mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just that. Yeah, like, it's weird. Like, you, like he eats your foot, and that's how it is. Um, oh, my. But I don't wear them much anymore, and, yeah, I'm not really a slipper guy. Um, but, like, I get home, my socks stay on. I don't know. I'm cool with that. But then summer, like, once the snow's gone, 
No and songs. we get 10 no degrees songs. higher. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to all the people watching on YouTube and stuff. You're going to see my feet again. Like, I wear flip flops. That's what I do. And shorts. You never wear shorts. I wear both. Yeah. Shorts will be back. Yeah. So you're going to see yeah. my hairy legs plus my feet. But it's, I'm a flip flop guy. And so, all from sometime mid spring through to sometime in fall, I don't wear socks. That it's got to be a rainy day for me to then throw something on. So I like even so then like I'm not gonna come home and throw slippers on. I don't know. I just walk around no, on my bare feet. I'm used to bare feet. It sucks for my hardwood floors because there's footprints, <laughs> there's all, footprints over all over the place. I always clean it, but um, yeah. Yeah, the slippers go away usually in the, and I go barefoot mostly or flip flops. And then yeah. I've got some religious. Really they're, they're they're usually like a little bit of heavier socks them that I. They're comfortable. I don't need an extra comfort. So oh. sell me on slippers. I've never owned slippers in what? my life. I've never. I don't own slippers. Don't wear yeah, slippers. I, but what's the, what's the deal? I don't. I uh, don't recommend doing it now. I think we for once. Once hockey season hits, or like first game of the regular season, go get your go to. I find the best ones. I mean, there's some deluxe ones, but Sorrells, a lot of bang for your buck, and they're not not the cheapest. But you get a nice like wrap around. Hugs the heel and stroll around in those things. Change your life. Change your life. Slippers. Well, I, I had a life. meeting about merch yesterday, and I completely forgot to bring up slippers. No. I know. I brought up EST hangout socks. Yeah, okay, well. Huh. But now I okay. need slippers. You need slippers, man. But now, but I could delay that because I wouldn't have slippers now. Well, just, you know. I just got to know if there are slippers yeah, that I could get created. ES, I was waiting for that because I'd have the, the EST slippers. With the six o'clock or lager, hmm. with the with the selfie, just showing whatever the sporting event is. I completely messed that up. That would have been my F one shot right there. I'll get back on that. Okay, I'll text her later. <laughs> I'll, text, it on your board. I'll text Chelsea later today and just be like, "Hey, I need. Do you have slippers by any chance? And what's the cost of that? Because yeah. I'd like to know. Well, Especially like, going like into everything. someone's house. Like going a, into someone's house is great. To, bring your own slippers. Do you bring them to Tommy's? Uh, I or, didn't. No, no, because you're heading to the other game, yeah, so you're not there yeah. for too long. No, if if we were just going over there for dinner, yeah, or drinks, whatever, yeah, I'd probably bring them. Really? Yeah. Because mm. you bring, you bring, you know, you bring the gift or the wine. You know, you go into someone's house, you're bringing something. I have a bag. I just throw the slippers in the bag. So, how many pairs of slippers do you have? Or is it just the three. same one that you bring? But I, I my, like you have traveling slippers. You have house no, slippers no, and you have slippers. It depends on the. You can always tell if I. How much I like it with the with the slippers that I bring. Like I have my, oh my God. because the ones that are super comfy, you know, I'm gonna stay there for. Like I okay. like it because I'll stay there. But if I'm looking to get out of there quick, um, yeah, I'm probably not my best one. So or if I don't really know you, um, I don't. Yes. You bring them to somebody's place that you don't really oh know. Oh my god, that's a, yeah, that's yeah. a bold move. Yeah. No, yeah. like like hey, oh, welcome. Yeah. Like thanks for having me. Also, I'm gonna wear my slippers in your house. Yeah, that people look at a little bit puzzled at first, but then they're like, "That guy's really comfortable, you know, and he looks really comfortable." It it relaxes me. Sometimes there's a little bit of anxiety going to places. Now you don't take your main ones at home though on the road. Only if we're you're a good friend. See, and I I, I don't. <laughs> why wouldn't that just be your house one? That should be yours at home. They shouldn't be road games with that. No, no. The, you should have special ones. Like you should then have two. I would say two road ones. One for whether you're not sure about someone and whether you like someone and then you have your house ones which are that's home base they don't leave home it's again it's it, maybe it, it like when i played i always had the same gear i didn't have road and away gear right okay. so no you, you 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 wear what brought you to the dance in the first place <laughs> this is hilarious have you ever driven with your slippers on uh yeah yeah how but, is that um, I don't like to, yeah, because you know they get they, weird. They, they get a funky, but oh, gives you a little bit more feeling. You know, I was thinking sometimes I think I'm in a F1 car and you can feel more with that with that type of shoe. And but that's only my son's car because he has a clutch. But uh, no, I I try to I try to take them off before I go outside. Maybe quickly to take the trash out. You know, I'll wear them, but it's just really quick. Oh, You're kind of convincing so me a little bit on slippers. Really? Yeah. Well, my wife is in his slippers. Uh, for Christmas, I had to buy her some $125 pair of slippers yeah. she wanted. Like, what? She yeah, I would want to cheap out on the slippers. What's wife that? wears slippers? Yeah. See? Why didn't she get his and hers? I don't know. My yeah. brother, I, I, just, I don't like to wear much around the house. 
Like even I, I'm a nice husband and I back my wife's vehicle out of the garage in the morning, keep it running for her. Uh, so it's good. I do that in my underwear and a t-shirt. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. flip-flops. But so the flip-flops are the best. Yeah. The, 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 the easy out. I need to leave the run out of the house. Those are very quick to get on, gone. I get back home, easy off. Flip-flop season is the greatest. Yeah. Well, underwear out there. Yeah, huh? no, like no pants. Like, I yeah, mean, it's minus, me too. minus 25 and just go yeah. in your underwear. Yeah, I'm yeah. always underwear, tarps off. Not a chance. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. really now quick. Now that's comfortable. Oh, that's, that's really comfortable. comfortable. Like you, yeah. you want to be comfortable at home. You don't need to wear clothes very much. <laughs> just, just a little bit of clothes. I need at least no shorts slipper. on. <laughs> like I need, I can't go less than shorts. And I need a shirt on. I'm a guy that likes having the shirt. It's all right. Something being a, on. Being a never nude. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's, sort of that. No, it's not, yeah, it's, it's not there. So then I don't know if I want to go this far, but do you guys sleep with pajamas or? Um, I'm pajama guy. I have sometimes. I, I've got some, some funky pajamas, but usually it's just underwear, t-shirt. Do I want to ask? Yeah. Well, just underwear, no t-shirt. Okay. Then just get up and that's work for, no, out that in your underwear. Yeah, we're good with that. You don't yeah. need to put it's... clothes on to work out. You just work out in your underwear. It's all mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. You don't need underwear to, to work out at home. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I just don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's very easy. You don't want to wear a t-shirt on a treadmill because then it's Absolutely. too hot. It's too hot. No, I like it. I like that warmth. Oh, I, I, I always run with a t-shirt on. I bundle but up I don't on the like, treadmill. You want to sweat it out then? Well, no, I, I, it doesn't matter. I sweat like crazy, and it's more just keeping the treadmill from oh, okay. getting <laughs> soaked. Yeah, I, so. I just don't enjoy running on treadmills. I've done it, like, at least maybe in my condo. I don't like having the mirror in front of me mm. and staring at myself. Like You put a TV there. That's what you do. But it's a condo. I can, you know, I'm not just going to bring a TV with me every time iPad. up and down. Mm. And then, but, like, yeah, I guess, but it's just there's no good spot on the treadmill, and... But you don't have a trim on your house. You have the gym at in the, the condo. condo. Oh, in the yeah, you, yeah, you got to oh, yeah. wear a shirt there. You can't. Yeah, wear. no, but like I don't know. I, I when I run, I do prefer running outside. I love just walking down to the river valley, doing my run oh, down there. Yeah, that sounds. You can't perfect. stop. Like it's I'm. I have wherever I'm going. I got to come back. Whether it's walking or running, I got to get back no matter what, and it forces me to to do some exercise. The only exercise I like doing. <laughs> Throw the headphones in and get going. We're. uh Less than oh, 10 minutes away from the start of March Madness. Oh, look at that. North it's, Carolina. On their, uh, on their well, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Zek. I don't know. Some guy on TSN. He has UConn, North Carolina, Marquette, and Crichton as his final four picks. Awful picks. I'll just start right there. UConn, North Carolina, I got them too in my final four. The other two, they've like historically, they've never won it. They've never been there. What awful picks from Daniel. I'll say that right now. Terrible. Just the worst. <laughs> so who do you got in those? Bra- uh, uh, I got UConn, North Carolina with UConn losing to North Carolina, actually. I got North Carolina going to the final. I hate oh, I myself for this. It. I hate myself oh, for this. I like North Carolina this year. Back. No, because then I got to cheer for North Carolina in this tournament. It sucks. I actually, I, honestly, I should I should just go change. I got like 10 minutes, five minutes oh, to go change yeah. this quickly. <laughs> and take, take them out just so I don't have to cheer for them. But I actually do like what I've seen from North Carolina this year. So that one I was thinking with my head a little bit. I hate it. Uh, the other side, I've got Tennessee coming through and Duke. And Duke going all the way. And the reason I have Duke going all the way is I was very, like, this is a year where I don't feel comfortable. Looking at the bracket, looking at all the teams, I don't feel confident in anyone winning it. And I will never take UConn or North Carolina to win it. I can't do that. But I just straight beat, up, I'm not going to take them fully to Duke win it. Duke hasn't beat North Carolina this year. That's why they're going to win. Wow. Because they've lost twice to North Carolina. They were close games. North Carolina has not beaten them three times this year. So if they meet in the final, Duke's taking down North Carolina. Duke's winning it. That's my bracket. Well, I can't. I can't. I, I see. I'm the. I'm the opposite. Brilliant. Like I, I can brilliant. never ever cheer for, for Duke. Like oh, that's no. The, and I don't want to cheer for North Christ. Carolina. And now I'm like, but I think that they're the best. Like they are a solid team. They've won a lot of good games this year. They've beaten Duke twice. They're a top ten team for a reason. I like their team. And in their conference, I hate Arizona. I'll never take Arizona. They always have failed my brackets. Um, they, histor- they they just don't have it in their DNA to win. Uh, Baylor, I like a little bit, but maybe I take Baylor to go all the way now. You're running out of time. <laughs> nah, just, I got to stick with what I have. Yeah, I got to exactly. stick with what I have. I, I tinkered with it yesterday. I probably have already screwed it up. I started actually the bracket Euler game a couple nights ago. I did it there. I had UConn over Duke. 
And then I switched it to Duke over UConn. Then I switched it to Duke over UNC. So I've already started chipping away. So you're an ACC guy this year. It's all love the ACC, ACC for basketball. Love the ACC. Oh, so ah, now I'm regretting that UNC pick. You can't go with it. Yeah. Well, go with your I got five can't. minutes to change it. I got five minutes. <laughs> but I've, no but I got to do a keyword right now. No I know. Well, yeah, I can do it on screwed. my phone quickly. My, this is my laptop. It's very quick to throw it up on there. But I got to do the, the keyword now. So this is going to absolutely ruin it. Uh, I don't know if Zach or YouTube Trevor are listening, but uh, I'll have to text them right away to get ready. But it is time now for the keyword for the EST flyaway to Las Vegas. Two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations. Tickets to Cirque presented by FlyYEG and the LVCVA. The LVCVA are partners down in Las Vegas. FlyYEG, the Edmonton International Airport. Nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with nonstop flight from FlyYEG. Visit flyyeg.com for more information. Uh, I am taking that nonstop flight to Atlanta in June to hopefully go watch Canada take on Messi and Argentina. Uh, so, yeah, if you're looking for that sports trip, it starts with the Edmonton International Airport. The keyword today... Actually, there's a couple of meanings uh, on the keyword today. It's black. Black is your keyword. Text it to 780-218-9999. Black, B-L-A-C-K. You got to text it, not put it in the nasty chat. Text it, 780-218-9999. You got five minutes, and then we'll give someone a call. Uh, didn't work yesterday, but we'll try to get you on the air on the hango. The two meanings, I had the, the keyword for the uh, morning show was silver. Black, silver and black for the Raiders. That's where those two have come from, silver and black. Roulette. But yeah, there's I, also I, the roulette, roulette meeting, yeah. which is the second, put it on yeah. black. Yeah. yeah. But it had it was con- it was connected to the morning show keyword today, which was silver, oh. which I don't know if the morning boys, I didn't hear them do it today, so I don't know if they ripped it or not. Um, I don't know if they knew why it was silver, but it was silver because of the Vegas Raiders. You are so creative, Mr. Iwanek. I'm I'm aware. Yeah, I'm aware. Good, good what stuff. do you think of the keyword dining for Vegas? Well, I was hearing you guys talk about that. I mean, that's the biggest part of the reason I go to Thank Vegas. You. Is, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. They got a million great restaurants <laughs> yeah. there. So yes, please. Yeah. But absolutely. there's also the hole in the wall ones too. It's not just the oh. the 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 Wolfgang pucks that the you're Gordon going Ramsay's to. or not. Gordon, there's yeah. all the other ones. I'm gonna forget the where I went to last time. Uh, there, I'm gonna forget what it's called. But the front part of the restaurant is like a, a pawn shop. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can, while you're hanging around waiting for your reservation or whatever, you can shop in the pawn oh, shop. No and then the restaurant is in behind the pawn shop. And it's one of the top rated restaurants in Vegas. And it was good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It was in the Cosmo. If, uh, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a rock, too hard to look it up. Yeah. But uh yeah, just a pawn shop in the front of the restaurant. It was so cool. What were you gonna say? No, no, I just uh, I was thinking of if Bobby Flay's restaurant, but it I, it escapes me now. Maybe it's not there. Never mind. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Black is the keyword to text in right now. Zach to come is listening, so he'll uh, get in touch with someone. So keep your phone on. We will be calling some in the next couple of minutes um, for this chance to qualify. We're qualifying people till April twenty fifth. Grand prize draw April 26th. Uh, just, oh, I almost took off the wrong thing for the screen there on YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> um, this is the ESD angle presented by a White Claw Hard Seltzer. There's always someone looking to ride the next wave. They're here for the ones who make their own White Claw. The difference is clear. Matt Awanek, Murray McCourt, walking gauge with you here. Uh, oil stream pregame show later today, 5.30, as the Oilers will be getting set to take on the Sabres down at Rogers Place. Tommy at Hudson's White. Uh, we also are going to be on White Ave on Saturday for the EST watch parties. The Oilers will be taking on the Leafs. Tommy will be doing pre- and post-game show from there. But you could also join Eric and I at Hudson's West Edmonton Mall on Saturday. 2 o'clock, Canada, Trinidad, and Tobago. Big soccer match. Canada looking to punch its ticket to Copa America. Uh, we'll see if they can get that done. So uh, me and Eric doing the double dip of Hudson's yeah, on Saturday, awesome. which is going to be a lot of fun. How's Sunday going to be for you? I'll be fine because uh, I, I know I have to pace myself. I know I have to be a good boy um, because Aussie Grand Prix is 11 o'clock at night, I think, mm-hmm. on Saturday. Yeah. So I've got Canada at 2, Oilers at 5. Ozzy at 11. I got to stay up for Ozzy. So I got to be smart. That's a full day, man. I got to be smart. LTE is not going to make it. <laughs> that, and that's, yeah. I, I, I'm what? his ride to Hudson. So, or the Where second were Hudson's. we? I think it was two years ago. We, we were, were at local. 
yeah, for it because it was for, Hernan's going away party. Yeah, but was it qualifying or was it qualities? It was qualities. Yeah, then, right. Yeah. yeah, I didn't make it, it to was the Hernan's. end of qualities. No, you guys were in fine <laughs> form at that point because I showed up later. And you know when you show up late when people have already got to, yeah, everyone's you know, already hammered. And oh you my just gosh! Show up yeah, yeah. And I remember paying my bill. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember sneaking away to pay my bill, and then I don't remember getting home. That's fantastic. And I just woke up at home, and yeah. So it was. Uh, I wanted to stay for the entire. I think Qualies was midnight. Yeah, and it was a little bit later, and I think I left about twelve thirty. I just couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah, I was. Yeah, because we watched Q Q three was on. I think four right yeah i can't remember so but, yeah, yeah I, it was, even i no, it was you, going away i had a few too many house reds yeah <laughs> that's where i went well, that night i remember that night house reds Eeks. <laughs> oh, i love a good house red i'm well, i'm not a picky wine drinker and stuff well, so i know but they can get you oh yeah <laughs> well i don't know it's just a little different than the the fine wine it's just mm. oh you know when you sit on a few them, you things. enjoy them a little more that they don't just you just you, you can pound those house reds sometimes. They don't have an, a lot of flavor that you can oh, really that's enjoy. The, yeah. No, and, I, those go down very. I they yeah. go down very quick. Yeah, very easy. Which so. is not good. <laughs> Depends on your day or well, what you're fair. looking to do. <laughs> I haven't had a good at red in a while. Actually, mm. I haven't opened up a bottle in a while. Oh, that's so. one thing I'm looking forward to in Chicago. Gonna go to some nice restaurants and get some fine wine there. Any recommendations? Um, what's that? There's that one, uh, steak house that I never went to it. Guys always raved about it. I was, I always tried to find the hole in the wall place. Not the, not the real, um, I'll find out the name of that okay. place, but it has the, the massive tomahawks and mm. you know, those sounds just, perfect. Yeah. I want a big honking steak yeah. and some absolutely fabulous, fabulous wine. Yeah, wine. That's, yeah. a, that's a good night in my book. That's one thing you really miss about the NHL was uh, traveling around and <laughs> just going to the most deluxe restaurants. Yeah. And you know, you could uh, you you could afford the you know the a split between a few guys, right? The the three hundred dollar bottle of yeah. wine because everyone's pitching in, and yeah. you all try and you go, "Geez, just, that's just throwing in your per diem money." Yeah, and yeah. You go, yeah. Well, I, I, and I've told the story. I when I was back when I was first with Edmonton, Bucky would always go, "Okay, guys, I'll take you out. I'll take you and go into this." And you know, you'd be on a two week road trip, and after the first night, you'd be out of per diem money, and you're like, "How?" Oh, why am I? But it was because Bucky would go to to the fancy place yeah. and order the nine hundred dollar bottle of wine, mm. so he could he didn't have to pay for it. You know, he could just throw in a couple hundred bucks and try this thing. So he didn't even look at the name; he just looked at the price. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we have our qualifier uh, right now here for the flyaway. And congratulations! Who am I speaking with right now? Uh, this is Andrew. Andrew, congrats. You are the qualifier today on the hangover for the trip to Las Vegas. Have you ever been to Vegas before? Uh, yes, many a time. And what's your favorite thing to do when you're in Vegas? Uh, just the last time we went, we took in a hockey game. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. It, probably. That, when we went for the time, like Vegas, they know how to put on a good show with those Golden Knights. So uh, a good time at that. Well, congratulations, Andrew. You're in the draw. Uh, make sure you keep your phone on. April 26th, we'll be doing the grand prize draw. And if your name is chosen, they'll be giving you a call in the morning to let you know that you're off to Vegas. Great. Thank you very much. And there's Andrew, the qualifier for today's Hangout keyword coming up next uh the next keyword your next chance to qualify during the lock shop with a dusty and hustler uh and then one more chance today on the oil stream at noon uh oh no it's not it's two guys in a goalie today uh dusty gager and cast they'll have the other this fourth keyword today um as we're qualifying people up until april 25th andrew uh the qualifier for today uh, for the road trip for players i don't know if and while gager tries to figure out the door there um <laughs> I don't know how much the players nowadays get to go out to restaurants because you, you did you fly the next day or usually um, after a game? Yeah. So we and they fly night of. Yeah, we were. And that was still commercial sometimes. Like it was m the f my first stint with the oil was always commercial. Very only playoffs. I mean, I heard that uh, <laughs> that uh, 
because we weren't that good back then. But then that got into the chartering. But my next stint, there were times when we would leave after the game or or take an, uh, an earlier charter. But a lot of the times we would wait to the to the following day to leave the city we're in, and we would fly commercial. So, um, I mean, it was different. It was a lot of travel. It got tedious at times, but there was also a good chance to hang out with everyone. You know, mm-hmm. I talked to uh, players that played on the East Coast, and you c- comparatively, uh, who was it? I think it was Ron Lowe saying, you know, there was two, some like 130 nights you were away from home. Opposed yeah, to when he was coaching out there, every night you'd be home, right? You just it was just a quick little puddle jump. Yeah. So there is advantages to it, but again, I think that's uh, it's always, I think it's a good chance to kind of be away from the rink from your teammates and kind of build those bonds as yeah. well. Yeah, I just wonder how much the like how easy it is for the players these days to go out in their cities because unless unless you do a game day, but I don't know how much you go out. They go out on game days. In like what the afternoon, to, like to go try the restaurants and, and because like the Oilers will head off and usually they fly the night off. They'll go out that night. They'll get in, drop your stuff off in the hotel room and then they'll, they'll head out for a meal. At like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night? Well, usually it's earlier, right? No, so you got to eat. What do you mean? Like a game, like, uh, so they'll do it before the game? They'll head out for a mite, bite? Oh, that's all at the hotel. Yeah, like so then, but then the game's over. They're on the road. Then they fly immediately after the game to the next city. Yeah. You go straight to the hotel and go to sleep, no? Usually, yeah, depending on time. Yeah. It's all... So you if, really only have that next day, I guess? First, well, you, you, you'd you always travel the day before on the road, right? They're, they're, they're not traveling the day of in most cases. That's like a... That's in the CBA, I think. But um, yeah, as soon as you'd get in, depending on time, you'd uh, you'd go and grab a that bite. Day, okay, yeah, that's when you would. So they'll probably go in Toronto on Friday. Oh night yeah, and yeah. go try go grab a bite. Or I something. remember one time, like it was my. It's funny I think about this now because I just we, I made the Oilers or whatever. And it was a few games in, and uh, Tommy Salo was you know the other goalie at the time and tommy loved his red meat he was Mm. a big red meat guy so i got into toronto and i was like everyone's doing some stuff i go you know what i'm just gonna go grab a bite and i walked around downtown and i was i saw ruth's chris and so i was like oh you know Mm. what i'm just gonna go grab a grab a steak and so i walk in and the the you know the host goes hi you have a reservation i go no and he goes okay for for how many just one (laughs) and i remember her looking just one (laughs) what a weirdo (laughs) (laughs) and so so i i had this little table in the corner and i was sitting there and i i think i got a a strip or whatever and stuff and i'm and i look up and tommy's looking at me and he's sitting with a couple swedes and he was like looked and then he goes and then I come over, I bring my steak over to the <laughs> place and sit down. And after that, we were best buds because he was like, oh, my God, you're, you love steak. So we bonded. Our, our goaltending union was bonded over steak. And after that, we, he took me for dinner. He took me for the most deluxe dinner I've ever had at, uh, oh, in New this? York. Where is this? Um, so if you're a real foodie... Uh, you might know Marcus Samuelson. He's uh, he was on the Iron Chef. He's like a, I think he's a two star Michelin chef, or whatever it is. And he has a, you know, one of his restaurants is in New York. He's Swedish, um, but he's adopted from Ethiopia, um, so he's fused Ethiopian cuisine with with Swedish cuisine. And I knew he had a restaurant in New York called Aquavit. And Tommy said, "Let's go. We'll go to my buddy's." restaurant and we walked in and i saw i go your buddies and i didn't think it would marcus samuelson Mm. right so we sit down and it's all it looked like really rich swedes in new york and it was all everyone spoke swedish and it was before i even went over there so don't understand a lick we sit down with a couple guys nice table um wine comes out didn't tell them anything yet and all of a sudden marcus samuelson comes out from the back and shakes Tom and Tommy knew him because he played in uh in the Islanders at that time, right? Mm. So um we didn't see a menu. And we it was probably about a 13 course dinner Jeez. that Marcus Samuelson prepared for us. So uh, and you know, they're just little things yeah. that are coming out. But I mean it was artwork what we were eating. Yeah. And all the like the reindeer, the meatballs, the 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 different types of, of fish and 
like by course 13, I'm like, no mas. Like, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. But it was the most delicious. And I could, like, he would come out and talk. And I, Tell I you met everything so was and everything else. I was just like, I was more, you know, you get starstruck on certain meetings. I was like blubbering my words. Like, wow. But that was, uh, that was crazy. So, I mean, that's, uh, that was one of my proudest moments being a, professional hockey player (laughs) (laughs) being in new york and meeting oh my god i mean it was like everything the restaurant the way it looked it it was it was so bizarre to be in that setting where it was so fancy it was just ridiculous it was pretty cool and just having it made by him too you know he was that's like he was back there you know you watch all the chefs and, and, and doing everything and put yeah he did it crazy yeah you don't get that too often no 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 well, sounds good yeah so what do you, you just vi- trip to Chicago just cause well, go see Connor Bedard my wife is in the education world so we only have little windows of yeah. time mm-hmm. that we can uh, cause spring break next week yeah spring break yeah. next week so we always do uh, like a beach vacation in uh, December and take Luke with us and. This time it's also our anniversary uh, next week, so it's we leave Luke with uh, my wife's parents and off we go. Last year we went to Vegas. This year we're going to Chicago. Who knows where we'll go uh, next year? My wife is a big city girl. She's a mm. big foodie. Loves good wine and loves to explore new cities. She's never been to Chicago. I obviously have been a Blackhawk guy, and uh, so that's where we chose to go. <laughs> It's the only place Dusty ever, uh, or it's the, the reason Dusty missed his only ever show, I think. Chicago. Where, yeah, he was draft. They were out there, and he didn't show up. And Will had to do the show by himself oh, really? back oh, back boy. at the station. This is my and favorite says, city I'm going yeah, to in the show. So I've good. heard a lot. Of, like Tommy's been to all these places too, mm. and he just Chicago's right up there. Chicago. The places to go. Yeah. Nashville is, I think, the stop these days. Like people want to yeah. go to Nashville. That's the party. That's the great bars. That's the yeah. great scene nowadays. So. Yeah, I mean Nashville's great and for parties and stuff, but Chicago, I think it's the best city by far. So much fun there. Yeah, and, and just so I, it wasn't planned at all, we were going to Chicago no matter what. But the Blackhawks are playing the Flames on Tuesday, so yeah, cool. <laughs> darn. Well, a chance we to see to Connor go. Bedard, yeah, on his home ice. Exactly, I'm excited for that. That uh, yeah, that'll be good. But yeah, going to be some shopping and some dining and Michigan you know, Avenue, Michigan. just fantastic. Yeah. We'll, is that we'll take it all shopping? In. Yeah. Then yeah, we're gonna go on a uh, like a there's a river through the downtown. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go on a like architectural river cruise. Maybe so, it'll still be green. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I don't pretty, know how long it stays yeah, green yeah, for. I, I don't think very long. No. But, uh, anyways, yeah, we'll we'll do some exploring, but re- resting and just relaxing and and uh, yeah, we'll have some fun. Cool. Oilers tonight taking on the Sabers. Um, how do you make it where the Oilers are at right now? I don't know. It seemed like it's, I didn't get a chance to listen, but Tommy's like, people are pretty, it was a little angry of a post-game show on Tuesday night. Well, um, they were treated to such a thrilling game on Saturday. They just, they. Yeah, the Habs came to town. I know. Um, they got to watch it, man. The, the Sabres are, are, what they can generate from the back end with those, they, I mean, they, they're three-pronged defenders. This they should be dangerous in a few years with these now with Byram with uh, with power and um, shoot forgetting the other first rounder there but um, those three guys are are phenomenal phenomenal talents that can you know you can have one of those guys on for every minute of the game so Dolin Dolin sorry well, yeah. Yoki Haru there is Yoki a first Haru, round yeah, pick too yeah, like they're it's uh, it's crazy, and now they're they're goalie, and this guy he's playing quite well too. Um, I I'm surprised with Cousins though. Like I thought he was uh, he was teetering on like a, a star. Mm-hmm. And so he's taken a little bit of a step back, but still a really good player. And they've always Oilers have always had trouble with the Sabers at home here. Um, yeah, it's uh, they're gonna have to if they play like they did against the the uh, the Canadians, they're gonna lose. I actually thought Buffalo was would have turned the corner by now because yeah. they do have a lot, a lot of great talent. There. Well, they were always the Oilers, just yeah. a few years behind. But now they're now like the Oilers at this point at least got to the playoffs. Now I think in the if you I think sixteen seventeen Oilers I think we're past that point at the Sabers, mm-hmm. and they, they still have, haven't gone back to the playoffs. They don't have a McDavid 
or dry sidle them. Yeah. No, but they had Eichel. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> I know he's not McDavid, but no. he's a very good player. He's it's, it's a strong player. They they couldn't get it yeah, done with this, him. They've brought the some same, other players. Yeah. Like they've built the Oilers didn't have a blue line like that. Well, oh, that blue line is the and blue line they is. found a way to get to the playoff sixteen seven, then they drop and now they're back up. Um the Sabres, like it's just when are they going to finally turn this corner and get into the playoffs? When is it time that they finally are a team that's well, you, you get know, into the playoffs and stays in the playoffs for a consistent number of years because they've built such a strong team? You wrapped off their coach as being there for a long, long, long period of time. Hmm. Maybe Well, long in terms of the rest of <laughs> sure, the league. But if, if you can't get that roster uh, into the playoffs, I don't know. He's he, they got to be looking at that. And I go... Eichel's a phenomenal hockey player, but he's a piece of the puzzle. He's he's not the he's not the border of the puzzle. Right. Connor is, you know, he's Big the difference. he's the centerpiece that you build around. Eichel's one of those pieces that fell under the couch that you look for and then put it in. Go, oh, there you go. Yeah, but a lot of teams can make the playoffs though. Connor McDavid, right? And this is a team oh, that's had a lot of gonna... high picks, and they've had a lot of. They they have the defense and they still haven't just been able to get there. So like that's where I'm like I think the last like, three years every year everyone goes into the year going this is going to be the year for the Sabers this is going to be the year for the Sabers and it's not done. Yeah. This is, might be the closest right now. Seventy one points, they're five points back of the Red Wings for a playoff spot. The Red Wings have a game in hand, so this is like the closest they've been to now being playoff hunt, but they're still not in the playoffs. Yeah. They're, that whole that whole race is just limping to the finish line too. It's it's awful. Well, the Lightning have kind of pulled away yeah, nicely. The Lightning have yeah. started to turn it around. And sure. I'd never want to play the Lightning in the playoffs. No, they have the they, they have know. the blueprint, man. They have the the duo point Cooch, Hedman, still arguably top ten defenseman. E, well, easily top ten, arguably in the top five. And then the goal, like Vasilevsky, they shouldn't have won that game against the the uh, the Panthers the other night. He stops forty seven again, right? It's just they're they're battle tested. They know it's almost they're as light switchy of a team as you can get. You know, you always say you can't turn it on. They're the team that's you know it's a dimmer switch. Yeah, it's still kind of can, flickering, yeah. and then you. <laughs> it's for them though. Like as of right now. They go also to the Metro in the playoffs, mm -hmm. which would be an interesting path for the Lightning. Yeah. Where you're out of the Atlantic, you don't have to take on the Bruins, you don't have to take on the Leafs, you don't have to take on the Panthers this year. You get Philly, Carolina, Rangers. That's that's your path to get to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. I'd be terrified of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. yeah. Especially for those three teams right there. Yeah, it makes sense. And maybe that's by design. <laughs> hey, like... <laughs> you, you plan it that way, but... I mean, hey, I mean, they're turning it on when they need to turn it on. I mean, I, I was hoping they kept tanking because the Blackhawks have their first uh, round draft pick again this <laughs> oh. year, and then now they go eight and two or something like that in their last ten. It's like, oh come on, <laughs> what's wrong with five and five, you guys? Uh, I don't feel bad for the Leafs, but also like you get Panthers or Bruins, and Leafs then if you win, no you get Panthers or Bruins again. Yeah. Like they got no chance. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, but not not to. Maybe they could surprise for a series. I'll give them. They have a lot of players. I could see maybe you surprise in a series. You're not doing it two back to back series. Mm -hmm. Not that team. No, yeah, they're exactly. they need superhuman efforts on D and goaltending. Yeah. And I I just I I hate to say it, but it's a different animal in the playoffs, and I don't I don't find that big four has the. Has Is this the, the year they break that up? They have to. Yeah, I think so too. They have to get. They have to get rid of one or two of those guys and replace it with something else. That you're not formula, getting rid of Tavares. Yeah, how do you get rid of that? Contract? You're not getting rid of that one. You're not getting you rid retain, of Matthews. You got to retain or well, I don't know how it works. Yeah, well, but yeah. I think it's Marner. Well, it's not Nylander. Oh, you just yeah. signed you him. Just signed him. So it's Marner. I mean, they're, they're moving on from Marner. They, do they have no movement clauses though. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, so, but I think you can get Marner to a wave. Yeah. But it has to be to the right team. Sure. What is uh, I'm just gonna pull up cap friendly. Like, I figured last year Tree Living come in, he'd be the guy that comes in to start that, and they didn't do it last year. So that's where I'm skeptical that they're actually gonna go ahead and do it. Well, they made some. Who was the they on D and they had some injuries, right? So, God, what's the what was the name of the defenseman that was with 
Anaheim that went there. He Martin doesn't know move clause, by the way. Yeah, he does. But um, yeah. the the moves that he made, I thought were were interesting. He he brought in some guys that Labushkin. You're talking about no Swedish guy. Um, played with Dallas, went to Anaheim. Shoot, my names are age is creeping up on me here. Um, he was supposed to, you know, he's more of an offensive defenseman. Um, Riley is fantastic. I think he's great, but there's just no, he can't play 60 minutes either, right? They need, they need an echo badly. Someone like that, that solidifies things. So that was really a swift move for the winners. Oh my my gosh, man. That was so good. And one that no one saw. Yeah. Like in that entire discussion last year of trade deadline, I don't think Ekholm's name really came up once. Like it was not someone that was on anyone's radar. It's like the hurdle kind of with Vegas this year. Ken Holland did that last year with Ekholm, mm-hmm. whereas no one yeah. was talking. Like a lot of teams then could have maybe gotten Matthias yeah. Ekholm. Yeah. How great would it have been yeah. for a lot of teams yeah. to bring in a guy My like Matthias gosh. Ekholm? But Ken Holland got it done, and for it's not been much. great. And yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Like in the two firsts, and you're giving up Tyson Berry. Yeah. But prospects, yeah. you never know what they're going to be. Yeah, I did. I didn't and like you that. got a guy, but it's also with Ekholm, it was term. And yes. it's not a situation where you're like, I don't think anyone looked at his contract and was like, ah, this might age poorly, what you're bringing in. Mm-hmm. Everyone's looking at this. This is unbelievable. Do you think there'll be now, just seeing what Vegas has done and the disregard for picks, <sighs> um, that GMs kind of change their, especially take a team like the Blackhawks, right? Well, do you think, like, most of it's been through the draft that they're mm-hmm. trying to rebuild. Do you think there's going to be more focus on possibly Getting rid of these picks for more established players? Not this year. One more year. One more year? Yeah. They're going to keep that cap space. But that's what I was just going to bring up. Like, you talk about the Leafs and getting rid of a guy like that. There are so many teams, the vast majority of the teams are right up against the cap that those guys are going to be are going to be really really difficult to move mm-hmm. now and like sure Chicago's got bolo to cap space they're not they're not taking Mitch Marner <laughs> yeah. there's no way they're taking Mitch Marner like they didn't make any trades at the trade deadline well they made one little move but they they have all this cap space and they weren't willing to take a third or fourth round pick to take one of their spots cuz you only get three spots where mm-hmm. you can retain money so they felt they don't want to waste a spot they want to wait till the summer where they think that they're going to be able to get way more than a third or fourth round draft pick, maybe a first round mm-hmm. draft pick. But you're right. I can see, like even this year with that Tampa Bay's pick, I could see Chicago, if, they, if they're targeting a guy that's maybe 8, 9, 10, I could see them moving that Tampa Bay's pick and one or two of their second round picks to move up to get I can see them doing things like that because yeah. you can't have – they have so many prospects coming because they've had so many picks and they yeah. have so many picks up coming that you can only onboard so many guys mm-hmm. uh, at a time. So 100% I can see them flipping out picks to move up in the draft to target certain guys, maybe trade like a third or fourth round pick that they have lots of to get – like another veteran player mm. or something like that to come in for next year. But yeah, like, but the the 2025, like not this year, summer, but the next summer, sure guys can get signed. But that <laughs> free agent class, oh, <laughs> that, that's where they're going to get somebody, I think. Portions of this hour of the EST Hangover. Sorry, I'll just quickly get this in. Uh, portions of this hour brought to you by the Edmonton Blind Curling Club. They're hosting the 50th Western Canadian Blind and Vision Impaired Curling Championship from March 20th to the 23rd. So that was yesterday through the 23rd at the Granite Curling Club. Come out and support visually impaired athletes as they look to become champions of the West. A great chance to just watch some curling. And Eric, just he's been at the Granite a lot this year. And uh, great food, great burgers uh, when you're out there. Uh, Best watching. smash burgers in the city, that's, that's so they say. They, that's what Eric's yeah. saying. What's a smash burger? You take a burger and you smash it on the grill, like you push it down on the grill. Yeah. Oh. So the 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 theory, like the big, like white hot cast iron skillet, um, people do it differently. Maybe the uh, the like you get the smasher, like the the press. So usually it's in a ball and it's somehow like it just completely caramelizes, depending on the mixture of the meat. But then the uh, it's usually with the American cheese, fluffy white bun. There's a sauce. So, yeah. 
So I thought you were a hot dog expert, but you're a burger expert too. Uh, there's, uh, I dabble in a lot of the yeah. culinary arts. Yeah. But You've never had a smash a... burger? They're usually very thin in the end because yeah. you're smashing them down. Yeah. And generally you do two patties. Yeah. It's better with two. Wow. It's funny, I got a text from a, a listener, Art New, a friend of mine is listening. He texted me and offered to take me for a Big Mac later. <laughs> like, so, so, you know, what? where's the burger better at... Uh, where would you say the oh, granite, granite curling club? Granite, granite, take, club granite. Take, granite. take granite, take oh, granite, take the granite, take the granite. Go granite. Yeah. Go check sure. out, like honestly, go check out this Canadian Blind and Vision Impaired Curling Championship this weekend, the Western Canadian one. Um, it's going to be great curling, um, and then grab a burger. And like Eric's recommendations aren't, he doesn't just throw them out there. And so like, and like curling rinks generally, they have some solid food. There's a lot of good curling rinks in Edmonton that have just great food, and right. the granite's one of those with their smash burgers. So, no, 100%. Get the granite. I'm not a burger guy in the first place. No? Though. Like, why have a burger when you can just have a steak? Oh, I got to have you over. Maria. The, the bur- <sighs> I, I, will, I will make you cry with the burger. Because it's, really? yeah, it's yeah. not always just about the meat. It's well, what you accompany it with, with the toppings and stuff, and you, you make uh, it into something I'm very not special. I'm a topping guy, though. Like, I would not put mustard or relish or no, no, ketchup no, 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 no. or pickles just or tomatoes or bleh. Oh, you know, so you're more like there. dusty. Yeah, just, well, uh, it's got to be a burger. The burger's got to do it for me. A nice spi- some nice spices in it or something to give it a... Salt, salt and pepper. pepper. That's all you need. Oh, something. Oh, that's, that's all you need on the burger. Okay. That's so all. There's my, nothing. Do you put, like, any, like, holdings in it? Or is it just ground beef, salt, and pepper? Because I'm ground beef, salt, and pepper. I don't put well, breadcrumbs, hold, egg, then? or anything. It, it holds hold? just fine. Okay. You put in like so <laughs> when I when I do my uh, there's I call it my uh, red, white, and blue burger. It's I put a little blue cheese on, so, <sighs> so it's red, white, and blue. but anyway. So my mixture because I'll grind my own meat. So okay, I, of course you do. So I have That's like wonderful. I, I go to um, uh, Acme yeah. Real Deal or Acme Meats, and um, and uh, he gets a, I get a half pound strip loin, half pound brisket, half pound uh, back rib, and I grind it that all together. So oh. you get a that's okay, and then this is sounding better than just ground beef because no 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 there's a lot this of ways to do this things is, here yeah that that's what you that's that's how you you grind your own meat because then you can actually have a a medium burger where it's like I I like it a little yeah pinkish. so like the the whole E coli thing the reason why there's all those things is because it's the the meat you get is just everything ground up, so it's inside. And that's, that's in Canada, not the U.S. There's a big yeah, separation yeah. in our ground beef. Yeah, and because France in the U.S. It, they yeah. can cook it to yeah medium rare, rare and stuff yeah. and get a little because pink. you're taking the actual yeah. like a like a New York strip and and grinding it up, right? So just salt and pepper. Yes, and, um, that's all you need. On a maybe burger. maybe that's a brioche need. bun, right. and you know depending on what I like I like the. Either a slice of Gruyere or Emmental, some, or maybe even a Havarti, like a spicy Havarti. Mm. It depends. Um, melt that bad boy on there, and uh, yeah, you're crying after that. There's so crying. many different things you can do with burgers. Like the the burger, the the patty needs to be able to stand on its own. Yeah, like it needs to be a good patty. Mm. Yeah. It needs to be cooked well. You need to be able to eat and enjoy it. But you can add so much to it to make it even just. So better. what are you putting on it that makes it so? It depends on what you want. Like I have a bunch of burger cookbooks at home. Like you could do a Caesar salad one where it's basically making like almost like a Caesar salad, but like you're putting the, the, the cheese on there and you're putting the Caesar dressing on there. On little the bit burger. Of le- uh, yes. I've had peanut butter burgers before where you're throwing peanut, peanut butter, butter jelly on burgers. Okay. They're fantastic. Have you yeah. had chicken satay before, like a Thai place? Yeah. yeah. So just that peanut sauce. It's just on the burger. Yeah. And then with just like Swedish meatballs, you know, they have the lingam berries that you put on the side. That's what you use. I've done that. I've done the, basically I've made a Swedish meatball burger with the, uh, with the, I just use the Ikea sauce, but then lingam oh, berry yeah. sauce on there. Mm. It's fantastic. The, the California type burgers where you're getting avocados in there. Um, <laughs> you're not an avocado guy? <laughs> no. Oh, do you like guacamole? No. Oh, see. Wow. You're more, yeah, you're more in line with Dusty yeah. with these yeah, things. I, I'm picky. Yeah. My guacamole. You, you... Like, like, you don't even like mustard or ketchup? No. Absolutely so if, I, if you had a burger, if you were forced to eat a burger, what are you doing with the burger? It's just burger and bun? Well, I'd take cheese and maybe some bacon. Okay. That's, that's it. Oh, you're missing out, uh-huh. I would say. Yeah, I'm There's not a, a sauce lot. guy pretty much on most things. 
So you'd like my my deluxe burger because the 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 marbling of the of the brisket in there too. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need that bacon, good. right? That so sounds good. You yeah. would like a smash burger. You'd love a smash right. burger because it's just the burger and cheese, yeah. basically. And yeah. There's a sauce. Like you could maybe ask for no sauce. Yeah, no sauce, no, no sauce. And you'd be fine. Yeah. But like the smash burger, then you'd maybe like a smash burger. I might like a smash burger. What was the burger. place me, Eric, and Dusty found that it's like very popular? I'm not saying we found it, like, but for us it was our first time. It was a Shake Shack or something. Oh, in the yeah. States. That's yeah. If there's one in Chicago, give it a try, maybe. <laughs> Shake Shack. Yes. Yes. It was um it was delicious burgers. Rip City Steph texting in, by the way, seven eight zero two eight ninety nine ninety nine Paris Jewelers inbox. I love Murray learning about learning about things every episode he's on. <laughs> he knows what he likes. Yeah. And I like that. That, that is accurate. He like, knows g- what he likes, me, but you're also learning things every so often. Give me a like a twelve or sixteen ounce ribeye. Yeah, and I won't dis- some like I love steak. French fries and a a nice piece of garlic toast and an absolutely fabulous glass of red wine, and I am in <laughs> oh, heaven. Okay, that sounds great. But mm-hmm. I like steak every day. Like I, I, I need a little mix up, and a burger's a great alternative to me too. If I'm not gonna eat steak and I want meat, I'll go with a have, burger. If you've gone to a fancy steak place, if they have a burger on the menu, oh, it's gonna be try. Good. No, it's way. gonna be delicious. Why would I go to a fancy steak place and waste because they're my using, time on they're having using a burger? The Real, yeah, I, they're you, using the good oh, stuff I for the know, burgers. But they yeah. also use good stuff for their steak. <laughs> yeah, but you've had steak before. Yeah. Well, I've tried had their a burger. burger before too, but not, I their, just, not, not that burger. Not that burger. I just, yeah, I just like, especially when you go to the price now. Like you go to. Uh, you know, whatever, or Earl's or wherever. And it's like 22, 24, 25 bucks for a burger. And it's like, you know, three more bucks for a steak sandwich. Give me the steak sandwich. Like, where are you going? That's only three, yeah. more, bucks for, three more bucks for a steak sandwich. Well, I know the prices these days. These there was a, outrageous. I there know. was a really good burger in Banff at the, at, what's that called? The Peak? The, it's right on the strip. They, they had a, uh, it was a $25 burger, but they, it was all ground, uh, short rib and the like they'd grind up half of it and the rest they would put on top of the burger so you'd have the a little short rib on top on top of the burger it was getting so hungry that was a that was a good one short rib uh, like man i just uh my wife's birthday was a few weeks back we went to 19 they have a good one there okay yes like that that's what i had was the beef the short rib short rib oh like it's just so tender. You don't need a knife. It's it was so delicious. I'll make that for you, Murray. I, mine's pretty good too. Pretty uh, good. Yeah, Luna's I use a pizza. cauliflower mash though. Oh, I don't use a uh, potatoes, garlic cauliflower mash. You won't know the difference, and it's I'd, way more I'd healthy. Eat, I'd probably eat that. Yeah, I, I don't really like mashed potatoes, but cauliflower oh, mash. Yeah. I like a cauliflower rice. You eat that too? I no, like I haven't that. tried yeah, that. It's good. Rice mm-hmm. is good yeah. Cauliflower works well with a lot of it. Like it's yeah. a great way to eat cauliflower. Yeah. I like yeah. cauliflower in general. I'm one of those people. Yeah. But. Or, or mix regular rice and cauliflower rice, mm-hmm. and then you get a lot healthier right. too. But it's good. Mm-hmm. I, I must say, um, me, you, and Cass last Thursday on two guys and a goalie were discussing uh, right Zach yeah. Hyman and his goals. I know. Right now, he's not scoring. I don't know. You guys through, never I guess, two games. Through two <laughs> games. But uh, Gager doesn't think Hyman's going to get more than six goals the rest of the season. I said at 52 and a half, right? And you took the under. Yeah. Well, which was six more goals. He is scoring at a much, much higher clip than he has in an entire career, right? Yes, so, but it was, he's been doing it all year. Fair. Um, and it only twice this season he's gone through three straight games without scoring a goal. Today's game three now for that, for that drought. But... Um, Gage, right now it's uh, looking better for Gager than Cass and I, I with what we okay discussed about two guys in a goal. With Gager being right, so long as he finds it again come playoff time. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's where we're gonna, they're going to yeah. need Hyman to show up in the playoffs. <laughs> they're going to need a few guys. And that's yeah. where I'm intrigued to see what Evander Kane does in the playoffs. Yes. Because he's a guy that hasn't been, he hasn't Corey, scored in Corey a while. Perry, too. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Kane is. Kane people can hold. Kane. People can bend of the doubt because they'll say physicality, but also I, this guy, you need him in the playoffs. Mm. Well, I, I'm okay if he's not scoring right now. But bring it if in the it's playoffs. showing up in the playoffs, I 100 percent agree. And so I'm very intrigued to see if he can do that. I don't care if he doesn't fully produce right now, but it's it, people point that in in the playoffs he's a guy that's produced. There's 100%. a guy that's going to show up physically and on the score sheet. I don't care about hits in the playoffs. That's it. Yeah, he needs to produce offensively as well. Um, what are you seeing from Kane right now? A guy that's trying to find it somehow, you know, usually like he did a much better job the past 
couple seasons where when things weren't going well, it seemed like his focus was on the other parts of the game where mm-hmm. he could contribute, whether it was physicality or, you know, good, smart plays with the puck. Seems like he's just, I mean, he had that, uh, I think they were on the second power play end of the game and or it's over time he went top try to put it top shelf and missed the net by a mile you know this is that's a guy that's usually when he shoots the puck good goal scores the goalie always has to make a save right so you'll notice when he's shooting and kind of feeling it even if he's like the goalie stop he's all the goalie's always having to stop the puck or it's going in the net him missing the net from that distance is a little bit alarming to me that's a guy that's not but um, he's got to find that way how he gets engaged with the game a little bit more. He doesn't. Ha- it doesn't have to be a good goal. Um, I don't think he's been in that um, those playoff scoring goals like those six feet from the net areas as much as he has been in the past. That's Is where that he's got him an area. Yeah, he's that's yeah. where he has to get back to. I think and just bang in a couple loose yeah. ones instead of trying to. He has the ability to beat goalies from distance, but I think he should start in the in the tougher areas right now. And that'll get him more engaged. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll just see if he can get it done. Like it's, and again, like I, I'm it's not obviously more than capable of getting it done. Yeah. So yeah. at some point the game slowly starts yeah, leaving think, you though or something. Well, this stage of the year too, I mean, it's, guys yeah. are maybe nicked up and you don't know about it. You just, you just never know. Come playoff time. I th- that guy's going to show up. He's that's who he is. Isn't it? I, uh, well, I need to think so. I'm he's one of those like if this to. team wants to have that playoff run if they want to get that stanley cup everyone it's not just connor and leon yeah. it's he's everyone. a guy that needs to step yeah. up he'd be one of those guys that you definitely need that production from otherwise sure. I, I don't think they're going to go for and he although has. Uh, we'll see he's... if vegas can still get in the playoffs <laughs> yeah they have, oilers absolutely have a roster that can can win but yeah. they all they all gotta they all they have to bring it for 16 they games yeah, there can't be any passengers uh if they all show up and work their butts off every night and and battle through some adversity because there's going to be some mm-hmm. uh you know they they can do it but boy they they they're going to have to bring it because there there is rosters that are deeper than theirs there are some they're going to play some awfully good hockey clubs if they're going to win so they if they bring it they have as good a chance as anybody maybe there's a chance that they uh, don't have to play Vegas and Colorado maybe Vegas has to go to the other side it could be. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's Colorado taking on Vegas in the oh. second round, and the Oilers meet the winner of that one. Well, Vegas better figure it out pretty quick, or they may, you might be on the outside looking in. Wouldn't that be something? That would. Uh... That's And that's, this is part of the reason I have no problem with what they do with LTIR. It's that it's great that they can get these players back in the playoffs. Guy gets to the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Fair. And When's where Hurdle are they right now? supposed to be playoffs? Yeah, last, I think it weeks be, of the season. Or yeah, our last few games of the season, he could Gee, potentially be back. Yes. So the Golden Knights, with two games in hand on Minnesota, who's the first team out, they're three points up. So, and oh. as of right now, the Canucks would get the Golden Knights, and it would be the Jets who would get the Preds. But the Jets have a game in hand on the Canucks. So if the Jets win that game in hand, then the Vegas Golden Knights would go to the Central and Nashville would go to the Pacific, I think. So Preds are hotter than oh, uh, gosh, heck right yeah. now. But 8-0-2. Are, are, you, are, are you thinking that they're a legit contender? I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, you do, hey? Yeah, well, you liked them last week even. Uh, when you're, you've got the goaltending and Roman Yossi is playing, again, a, a num- having a number one defenseman is, a, is hard to play against. Um, Philip Forsberg is one of the probably the most underrated forward in in the NHL, and you got to everyone else is playing the right way, right? So that it scares me the teams that are playing playoff hockey right before the playoffs start. You know, it's the other teams that are starting trying to start the engine again once a, once game eighty three comes around, and the that's why I think the Oilers were so good going into the last year too. They they had to they had to like scratch and claw their way yeah. into the playoffs. They were playing at a very high level. Now it's it, it doesn't it doesn't give me too much pause because they're they seem more experienced about the whole thing. They know what they have to do. I I think there's a better ability to turn it on. Um but when you're playing a team that's firing on all cylinders, it's jumping on a treadmill at uh, at 10, right? You, it's it's very it's very and sometimes you fall flat on your face. 
You that won't flat on your face at 10? Oh, well, I don't <laughs> run at 10. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have a tough time seeing them carrying it through in the playoffs when everyone else brings their game. But, man, stranger things have happened. Columbus uh, beat Tampa Bay out there a couple of years back when everyone had Tampa Bay win in the Stanley Cup. I mean, that's why they play the games, right? Mm-hmm. So It's also about getting hot at the right time. You know, just even you Florida. go back to the Oilers, Florida. Yes, I, I was going to go Oilers of 06, but Florida more recent. You get hot at this time of the year at the right time as you go into the playoffs. You're ready to go. You're chugging along. It's a little bit easier to knock off some of these teams. And yeah, you got a great goalie. Yeah. Healthy too. too. You got to be healthy. Yeah. And stay healthy. Yeah, exactly. Florida, uh, Montreal, they're, they're these dark horse yes. teams. Yep. You know, and what what is the what was the secret sauce for those a lot of it was goaltending, um, but it was uh, it was everyone buying in and playing the right way, at a at a at a very scrappy level. Hmm. I would I would say so. Yeah, you never know. Well, you it, never know. And playoffs is such a different style oh, of different game beast. than it is in the regular season too. So and it's you know, called those, differently. Yeah, for it's sure. Called so differently, and, and the players just simply play differently too. The intensity oh, yeah. is ra- ratcheted right up, and justifiably so. I mean, it's eighty-two games to to get to the dance, and that's what you got to do. And now you got one team dance. for seven games, upwards of seven games. Yeah. It's so it's so much fun, man. When you finish the regular season and it's done, and you know you're going up against another team for a seven-game series, yeah, mentally, physically, emotionally, it's it's that's why they say it's the best time of the year. Mm-hmm. It, it's so much fun competing at that high a level against the best players on the planet. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. That's why you see what that the product speaks for itself. And the teams are playing on the same schedule, so you're not going into a team yeah. where you're playing your yeah. third game in four nights. Yeah, you, same you haven't travel, had three same three days that. off, yeah. and you're playing a team that's on their exactly. third game in four nights. And those games, I mean, man, there's spots in the schedule where you just, I mean, if you win some of those games it's like man like you almost got lucky or whatever right or if you lose the game in the opposite when well, you're on the opposite side of that it's like man you, you didn't show up i mean you lost a, a game you shouldn't have mm-hmm. lost well in the regular season there's scheduled losses sometimes right you Absolutely. look at like this is a scheduled loss in the playoffs there's no such thing as no. a scheduled loss right you said right? that much more eloquently yeah. than that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah and the playoffs is is straight up you're against that team there's yep. no there's no excuses on travel or, or anything. You just show up and battle and get her done. More Oilers discussion coming up here on Edmonton Sports Talk and iHeartRadio. Tune in to EdmontonSportsTalk.com as well as on YouTube as uh, two guys and a goalie. Gager, Cass, Dusty, Noon right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. And then 5.30, it's the Oilstream pregame show. Tommy at Hudson's on White. He's got GCs to give away. Uh, so if you've got time and uh, you want to watch the game uh, and Tommy with Tommy, uh, head to Hudson's White tonight uh, as he'll be there for pre- and post-game. Uh, but coming up next here on Edmonton Sports Talk, it is the lock shop, Dusty and Huss. Uh, one thing they'll be talking about, uh, Cool Bet has CFL future lines put out there. They're going into some CFL futures today. It's March 21st, and we're that much closer to CFL season we're getting to cfl futures betting talk that's coming up on the lock shop with dusty and Huss gager murray thanks for coming in as always on behalf of those two gentlemen i'm matt Awana. thanks for tuning in to the esd angle presented by white claw hard seltzer lock shop coming up in under five minutes right here on edmonton sports talk <laughs> let's go let's go there you go right in front of the camera <laughs> first time guest long time listener fan of the original draft commissioner Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matt Awana, Tom Zola with here. Joining us today, 